Good evening, high school baseball fans, and welcome out to Cabinets Field. Jake Vasquez, and I got my buddy back. <laughs> Justin Perales in the booth with me. And uh, Justin, first, I can't even believe that we are here having a baseball game <laughs> <laughs> after yeah. the weather we had just a few hours ago. Uh, it was pretty amazing. Yeah, it was an all-day all day thing, and everybody that I talked to was – Nobody thought we we're going to be able to get this game in, and and like you said, we're here, and and uh, hopefully Mother Nature holds up at least until the game's over, and then it can go ahead and rain all at once after that. <laughs> it looks like most everybody has found another spot to play. A lot of changes on some games around the area, and we'll get to that here in just a few. But we'll talk first about this particular series, and a change in this series is they will uh, instead of playing in Portland tomorrow and Saturday if necessary they have moved it to Ingleside so it'll be played in Ingleside tomorrow same time same time for uh, Saturday as well and we'll get you that schedule here in just a bit Rudy Trevino was uh, was on it earlier today uh, with all of the schedule changes let me just go through a few that he sent me earlier today um, let's see let's see <laughs> Looks like uh, TM Alice, they're going to be playing in San Antonio. So in San Antonio on Friday night, that's where I'll be. So I thought I was going to be in Alice, and now I'm going to now I'm gonna be in San Antonio. Rudy's our, Rudy's our uh, Blast Vision insider. That's right, man. He's our Adam Schefter of, of the NFL. <laughs> that's, that's exactly right. <laughs> that's who that guy is. I don't even know is. where he gets his information from, but I it's always accurate. <laughs> he knows <laughs> it. He's got it all. Uh, sitting now playing at CBC. So they're playing at Coastal Bend College. Uh, London Hebronville now playing in San Diego, so they'll be playing in San Diego. Uh, I think their dates and times are all going to be the same. They're just changing locations, trying to find some dry ground. And uh, like I said, this particular series, they'll be in Ingleside. And uh, let's go ahead and, and, and Justin, before we actually do starting lineups, let's talk a little bit about these two teams. You and I have seen a ton of these two teams uh, over the course of the season. And, and uh, would you agree if I said that that these are definitely not the same two teams that they were week one? No, definitely not. Um, I mean, our very first game of the year, we called the uh, Gregory Portland Moody game here, and um, we saw flashes of what they could be, and then they sure enough went on and, and became that team that they wanted to be. And, uh, I mean, they've been ranked in the top five pretty much all season long. And, um, I mean, we could talk about the Carroll Tigers, and I, I think we've talked about it enough already, that the, the whole Cinderella thing, but – they belong here. They're here. They belong here. And uh, I mean, the story the story was awesome. But you talk to Coach Marcelo. He's he's not satisfied with just being a Cinderella story. They're they're they believe they belong here as well. And and they're they're w re trying to win this uh, series for to move on to the next round. So one of the coolest things I heard Coach Marcelo say was at the very first press conference. And um, yes, you heard that right. I've seen all over Twitter. Uh, <laughs> Uh, you know, I saw someone from McAllen, a, a sports writer, a, a sports director for a TV station, McAllen. And uh, when Chris Thomason with Channel 3 tweeted out, you know, these are images from the press conference today. He said, wait, what? They had a press conference? <laughs> yeah, second one. Yeah, second one that that they've had. And, and uh, they just do things a little bit differently out here. But what I was going to say, one of the coolest things that Coach Marcello said at the very first press conference was he said everyone knows our story it's been well documented but i don't want our story to be about how we started i want our story to be about how we finished and that i thought was that's about the coolest thing your head coach could say uh he believes in these guys without a doubt and you know and coach jonesy the same thing on the other side i mean he believes in his boys he knows what he has and and they know that they're certainly capable of i mean both of these teams have no no lack in confidence about winning this and, you know, yesterday in the press conference, both coaches saying, I just think it's going to be the guys that make the plays in the moment because both of them are good enough to advance, but it's going to be who's good enough today. Yeah, you're going to see, you're going to see, um, I guess metaphorically speaking, you're going to see punches thrown. They're going to, there's, there's going to be waves in this game. Uh, there's going to be momentum shifts back and forth. And uh, like you said, whoever handles those moments, but just to touch on that again, as, as somebody who, uh, I had a chance to play for a state championship game, and we, we lost. And uh, that's something that, I mean, it was cool to get there, but at the end of the day, we all want to win. There's only going to be one team that's going to win it all. And like I said about Coach Marcelo, that, yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's an awesome story that they're going to remember forever. But at the same time, if they don't advance in this series, it's going to almost be like what could have been, you know what I mean? So right. they're going to be hungry to keep going. And, uh, 
Yeah, that whole Cinderella thing, I think it's done now. They, 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 they've proved they belong here, so. Absolutely, and let's look at how these two teams got here. Um, we're going to switch it over. We're going to check out uh, 361hsblast.com, and we're going to go ahead and check out some information they have. And uh, first of all, let's just kind of look at the uh, – We'll look over at the 29-5A district standings over on the right-hand side, and you see the Gregor Portland Wildcats right there finished first place in the district, 14-2 uh, and two in district play, 33-2-1 overall coming into tonight's ball game. The Veterans Memorial Eagles and the Ray Texans will kick things off tomorrow, uh, and then you've got the Carroll Tigers who finished in that fourth-place spot, 8-8 eight and eight in district play, but 21-13-1 overall. And if we go check out their pages, um, we'll start with the Gregory Portland Wildcats. The first thing that you see over there on the far right, the streak, 10 win game, 10 game win streak coming into tonight's ball game. So these guys are hot, and we'll talk about how they got here. For the Carroll Tigers, we check out their page, uh, four game win streak for the Carroll Tigers coming into this ball game. Um, but one of the hotter teams going into the playoffs for sure. So let's talk about how they got here. Um, let's go over and look at the uh, quarterfinals page and um, look at the matchup right there. And actually, let me refresh this. I think it should say Ingleside. Let me do a little refresh there. There it goes. So now uh, on the series info, uh, we got it correct right there. It says Ingleside tomorrow and Saturday if necessary. But by district round, the Gregory Portland Wildcats sweeping Mission Vets 9-0 in game one, 11-3 in game two. And the Carroll Tigers, they had to go three in that series against Rio Grande City, a very good Rio Grande City Rattler team. And Rio Grande came here, beat them 8-3 at home. And, uh, you know, it, it, it started to look bleak again, but I'll tell you what, I know they never thought that. Uh, and so they went over to Rio Grande City and doubled them up. And, and not just, I mean, commanding wins Justin uh, a 12-4 victory where they led the whole time now Rio Grande they did jump out on them four to nothing early in that in that ball game number three but 11 unanswered runs by the Carroll Tigers to get themselves into into the next round in the area round the Gregory Portland Wildcats sweeping Sherryland 3-2 and 7 nothing and Carroll sweeping Brownsville Porter 7-3 and 2 nothing and um you and I saw just a few minutes ago someone here scouting from Cedar Park. And in the next round, the winner of this series will face the winner of number seven, Cedar Park, and Leander Rouse. And I'm sure, uh, yeah, I'm sure you'll get some uh, coaches from Rouse. Uh, I think they're about the same distance. I believe they're both in Austin area. So uh, this time of the year, you start seeing, you see teams, I mean, you see some teams, they start scouting from before the playoffs even start. And, and I know we talked about this, Jake, of the possibility of, of district, uh, the 35A, 35A, and I mean there's four teams standing. I mean we talked about 29.5A, excuse me. We talked about how good they are, and I should probably know that. <laughs> as many games as we called, but uh, they, they haven't been 29.5A very long. I'll give you that much. <laughs> so <laughs> we we talked about how there was a chance early in the year there could be four teams standing in round three, and and, and here we are, and this is good for South Texas as uh, we didn't have the best uh, showing. I believe it was two years ago. The last time there was playoffs, uh, all four Corpus schools getting knocked out. So it's good. Uh, they kind of got their revenge on the Valley teams. And, uh, I mean, we're excited. We're excited to have some good baseball. And uh, like we talked about, the weather cleared up just in time for game. The field's looking a little bit soggy still, a little bit. I'm sure it's going to – you're going to see some people slipping and sliding a little bit. But I tell you what, like it beats being really hot. It does. <laughs> I'll agree with you there. There was a nice breeze when I was setting things up, and I was like, man, I like this. I like this a lot. Uh, looks like the umpires are coming out. So let's go ahead and start with the uh, starting lineups for both of these teams. We'll, we'll start with the visiting Gregory Portland Wildcats. Leading things off is the catcher, number four, Walker Yannick, batting second and playing center field, number eight, Malachi Lott. Batting third, the third baseman, number five, Easton Dowell in the cleanup spot and on the mound today for the Wildcats, number 16, Robbie Spencer. Batting fifth, the second baseman, number one, Gage Glynick. Batting sixth for the Wildcats, first baseman, number two, Kobe Orell. The designated hitter is number 13, Daniel Gonzalez. Gonzalez will bat for the shortstop, number 11, Jackie King. Batting eighth, left fielder, number 21, Braden Talamantes. And batting ninth for the Wildcats, is the right fielder, Andrew Vaez. And now let's get you starting lineup for the Carroll Tigers. Yeah, leading off will be the center fielder, number 20, Gilbert Gonzalez. 
Batting second will be the second baseman, number nine, J.J. Bush. Batting third will be the third baseman, number 19, Easton Hewitt. Batting fourth will be the first baseman, Diego Cardenas. Batting fifth will be the right fielder, Nick Matridis. Batting sixth will be the designated hitter, number three, E.J. Cantu. Uh, Cantu is batting for the pitcher, D.J. Dudney. Uh, batting seventh will be the shortstop, number 10, Christian Martinez. Batting eighth will be the catcher, Dave Palomo. And rounding it off will be the left fielder, number nine, excuse me, number two, Chris Chavez. Let's get you some info on both of these pitchers. Um, we'll start with Dudney since we'll see him first. So DJ Dudney, the senior, coming in and uh, see his record. That's why, looking at fielding. <laughs> <laughs> DJ Dudney coming in, the senior is five and two on the season, a 2.17 ERA uh, for the young man. And uh, for Dudney, 51 and two thirds innings pitched. He's allowed 20 runs, 16 earned on 40 hits, 25 walks and 59 strikeouts for the right-hander Dudney. And he will get the start tonight for that's the Carroll uh, Tigers. That's pretty good, Jake, for seven starts. Uh, Got to think that he would have had possibly five more starts if he was able to start the season. So that's just some pretty good numbers there from DJ Dudney. Absolutely, and on the his counterpart's going to be Robbie Spencer, also a senior, and Spencer ten and one on the season, and a uh, couple of complete games, one shutout thrown, and uh, a zero point nine eight ERA for Spencer. He has thrown 57 innings. He's allowed eight runs, all earned on 27 hits, 15 walks, and 81 strikeouts for Robbie Spencer. So Spencer on the mound for the Gregory Portland Wildcats. And uh, we got a few minutes here in our Z-Bart pregame show. Before we get things started, the home plate umpire is meeting with the coaches at home plate. And um, and just a reminder, like I said, if, you, uh, if you're just joining us, this particular series, uh, a change of venue, not a change in time, but a change in venue as uh, they will be playing tomorrow night, still at 7 p.m., but in Ingleside instead of Portland because of the weather. And if they need a game three, that will still be on Saturday. And I believe on Saturday they are scheduled for 1 p.m. And that game is going to be in Ingleside as well. So tomorrow night, Rudy Trevino will be in town, and uh, let's get you the um, let's uh, let's show you the Blast Vision schedule. Uh, let's get that up on the board real quick. You can find it on 361hsblast.com under the Blast Vision tab. So click on the Blast Vision tab. We'll get you our full schedule for the week, quarterfinal week, and um, so only game we got going tonight. These are the first. First teams to get started on a Wednesday night. And uh, tomorrow, Rudy will be here at Cabinets Field for Veterans Memorial and Ray, and I believe Justin's going to join him for that one. I will be I will be in Ingleside for this sec game two of this series between Carroll and Gregory Portland. Um, on Friday, Rudy will have Ray and Veterans Memorial right here on Blast Vision 2. And uh, I will be... I thought I was going to be in Alice. Now I will be in, in San Antonio for <laughs> the uh, one-game playoff between Toloso Midway and Alice. On the road, Jake. That's it. You've road dog road right warrior, here. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's been uh, – that's kind of how it's gone. So uh, it fits right in line. I would feel – I actually did feel kind of weird. I thought, man, you know what, I'm going to be home all weekend. That's kind of crazy. <laughs> As it turns out, not the case. But Saturday, uh, both stations will be uh, to be determined. So we're going to kind of see how things play out and uh, the weather's going to have a lot to say uh, with how this weekend plays out. So we'll wait and see how the weekend plays out, and then we'll pick some games for Saturday. Uh, if we can, we want to get some other classifications involved, maybe some 3A, uh, uh, maybe another 4A game. So we're going to try. We're certainly going to try and do what we can, and we'll, uh, we'll keep you guys posted on that on social media. So be looking out for that either late Friday night or early Saturday morning. We'll let you know where we're going to be. But Rudy will be in town all weekend, so we'll get both stations going for you guys. And I'm sure you guys can hear that uh, Carol Tiger crowd. I can't even hear you, Jake. <laughs> <laughs> We're right next to each other. Yeah, the PA here is a little bit loud, too. It's a, it's a little bit. Shortstop number 10, Christian Martinez. 
But they're finishing up the starting lineups here. Carol Tigers, and you can see it looks like uh, Easton Hewitt redid the hair right there. Looks real blue today. Some of these guys got it wearing off, and, and at the uh, press conference, some of their hair looked green yesterday. <laughs> it's that blue wearing I out. I heard blue. I, don't, I, don't, I didn't hear anything else. I heard blue and hair, and <laughs> I looked at the guys. So. <laughs> We're going to pause briefly to bring you guys the national anthem. In center field, the colors of our nation proudly display. Let us take this time to honor America with the playing of our national anthem. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, buckle your seatbelts. Three, two, one, zero. And it's game time. Lift off. So sit back and enjoy the ride right here on Blast Vision. Welcome back to the Stable Street Me Market broadcast booth. Jake Vasquez and Justin Padal is back in the house with us. And uh, Justin, I was a little disappointed. You were supposed to be on vacation, you and Rudy <laughs> both, and uh, and I constantly saw you on the chat <laughs> on the chat board. <laughs> had, to, had, to, had to keep up. Uh, I knew we had a chance to to be out here this week, and I didn't want to be out here uh, not knowing what I'm talking about. So hey, that's I, exactly I what that Rudy lot, said. So, so. <laughs> so I, need, I need all the help I can get. So I was. Uh, <laughs> well, we certainly appreciated it, and you guys providing scores for us and stuff. I mean, for me. And, uh, man, that was great, man, to be able to, to keep these folks up to date. And no scores to report tonight other than this one. We're the only thing happening here in town, here pe locally. Pe uh, people, I've been asked this question, why do you do this? And I had to, I, I, I kind of ste stepped back, and I was like, well, for one, I love baseball. Two, I love South Texas. And I was like, well, South Texas baseball, there you go. That's that's, that's uh, it. I, it's something that I know you're very passionate about. Uh, this is something that's been in the works for, uh, I mean, I believe you've been doing this for seven years on the radio. Seven years, and, yeah. And uh, now you have video, and, and uh, it's just going to keep taking off from here, and we're hoping to we're hoping to stay with you all for a long time. Well, I know you're hoping to stay for a long time. I have some other plans I'm hoping to take care of <laughs> over the summer, but uh, we're definitely, we're, we're, just, we're just big fans of baseball in South Texas, so uh, it's crazy to think about that we're uh, about three, four weeks away from Round Rock. I mean, that's it. it. I remember when we just started the season. We, we didn't even know we were going to have a season, and, and here right. we are, round three. That's right. There was there was talk about, you know, maybe maybe not a – maybe they start, maybe they don't finish again like last year, and we're just happy that, that, it did, that it did happen, and we're so just excited to be here, man. Playoff atmosphere is nothing quite like it. It's, it's like Christmas for high school <laughs> baseball fans. And no, definitely. And then you get two local schools, uh, kids we've seen play a lot. Um, Let's get you guys uh, defensive alignment for the Carroll Tigers. Yeah, left to right in the outfield. Be Chavez, Gonzalez, and Matridis. Left to right in the infield. Hewitt, Martinez, Bush, and Cardenas. De Palomo behind the play with DJ Dudney on the mound. And leading things off here for the Wildcats will be their catcher, senior Walker Yannick. Let's Gonna get, get you loud some up in here. Yeah, it's <laughs> about it's about to. Let's get you some numbers on Yannick as he digs in, and we're about to get underway. First pitch in there for a strike, and we are officially underway at 658. So 658 first pitch. Walker Yannick comes in hitting 371, 
39 hits in 105 at bats. Strike two. 11 doubles, one triple, five home runs. He's driven in 27. Yeah, one thing I did pick up on uh, watching the games is DJ Dudney uh, had a little bit of trouble early on finding that strike zone, and uh, once he settled down, really found it. That one's going to be lifted into right field, going back. Matridis over towards the line, and he'll make the grab. One away. A good sign here early on, Jake. On three straight strikes. That's, uh, I believe it was the last game where he fell behind and had to strike out three batters just to get out of that inning with, I think, bases loaded. So, so one down, base is empty here for senior Malachi Lott. And Lott leading the team, batting 471 from the left side. And Dudney starts him off with a strike. 471, that's pretty good. <laughs> that's not these, too these bad right three, there. top three hitters are uh, <laughs> tough to find a top third of a lineup that good. Swing and a miss. 0-2. Oh he has 49 hits and 104 at-bats, six doubles, eight triples, three home runs, and 30 runs driven in for Malachi Lott. Also leads the team 48 runs scored. That'd be that'd be really really good on a on a normal team, but you look at the guys' stats on deck, and I was kind of checking them out the other. Uh, I think it was last night, night before, and I was kind of in awe of the numbers. Those are they're, they're pretty good. Easton Dow having a video game type season as that ball's gonna be fouled back. The video Actually game is a, a good is a good a, description a, right there. Kind of had a coach ask me, and I was like, oh, I was probably throwing out some numbers, and while I was reading them, I was like, dang, I knew <laughs> they were good, but <laughs> didn't quite realize how yeah, good. Yeah, the young man on deck, I think he is ranked in the nation in the top ten in runs driven in. So pretty pretty impressive stuff, and these guys, I believe, are ranked eighth in the nation by Max Preps, uh, the Gregory Portland Wildcats. Dudney misses outside with that one-two pitch, so two and two the count. Some teams have trouble scoring 49 runs in a season. This guy has 49 RBIs by himself. Yeah, <laughs> yeah absolutely. <laughs> Swing and a miss. Back-to-back -back strikeouts for Dudney to start the ball game. And like you said, that's a good sign for the young man. Uh, he's feeling it tonight. He'll face Easton Dow. Junior third baseman for the Wildcats, batting 429, 42 hits in 98 at bats, 10 doubles, two triples, five home runs, and 49 runs driven in. He scored 32. If you get a chance, Jake, can you read the stolen bases? Absolutely. I think that's where I was kind of. I hope they were right on that. 31 stolen bases <laughs> yeah, for Yannick. The catcher, a catcher. Oh, catcher! I thought it was the. Uh, I, I thought about Easton. And Easton Dow. Dow, he's he's in he's in the second spot right there. Twenty six. That's 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 a lot. <laughs> Those are a lot of stolen base. That's more. Well, obviously, it's more than I had. <laughs> Probably my life. <laughs> two and zero oh the count. There's a strike. Two and one. Two one pitch gonna miss outside, so three and one the count on Dow. Three one, and that one's gonna be driven out to left field. Chavez toward the line, and he's going to make the grab for out number three. So the Wildcats go quietly here in the top of the first. No runs, no hits, no errors. No one left on. Our score, Wildcats nothing. Tigers coming to bat when we come back. Blast Vision live from Cabinets Field.
With the sun staying out later and the weather getting warmer, get out and grill. Staple Street Meat Market has the best selection of quality meats for your next barbecue. Known for their Angus beef fajitas, smoked sausages, and new authentic family recipe, Ponle brand spices. Like us on Facebook and never miss our weekly specials. We're located at 7626 South Staple Street, number 111 in King's Crossing. But coming soon, our new location at 7418 South Staple Street is set to open in early 2022. Stable Street Me Market, proud supporters of South Texas Athletics. Rick Signs with Zbart of Corpus Christi is a proud supporter of South Texas Athletics. Stop by their location at 4535 Everhart for auto alarms, window tint, diamond gloss, auto detailing, rhino linings, and more. Call 361-985-9274 for more information or to make an appointment. Z-Bart, it's us or Rust. Welcome back to the Stable Street Meat Market broadcast. Boo, Jake Vasquez, and Justin Perales. We're headed to the bottom of the first inning. No score. And uh, DJ Dudney making quick work of the Wildcats. Let's get you the defensive alignment for the Wildcats. Outfield left to right, Talamantes, Lott, and Valles. In the infield, Orell at first, Glynick at second, King the shortstop, Dow at third, Yannick behind the dish, and Robbie Spencer on the mound. So Spencer, tall right-hander, he gets the call in game one, and the combo has been, uh, and I think for the most part, Justin, they, they've been going with, uh, with Robbie Spencer in game one. I know they did the last series, and... Uh, trying to think did Spencer and he did I, I think he went in game one of the first series as well so yeah I think they've kind of gone Spencer lot and so we definitely expect to see Malachi lot tomorrow and that game will be seven o'clock in Ingleside weather permitting and I kind of looked at it and, and crazy enough we say weather permitting and the sun peeks out through the clouds we haven't seen the sun in a while <laughs> <laughs> nice to see you welcome back <laughs> yeah, so they go Spencer, Lott, and then they have a have a wild card coming out of the bullpen. Uh, catcher Walker Yannick, uh, pretty much been their closer all year, and and he, he can he can run it up there. I believe they have topped out this year, 94 miles per hour. So so for the Carroll Tigers, leading things off will be the center fielder Gilbert Gonzalez. Get you some numbers on Gonzalez. Senior batting 368 coming into this ball game, 35 hits and 95 at bats, 12 doubles, four triples, three home runs, and 18 runs driven in. He has scored a team high 29 runs for the Tigers from the leadoff spot. Yeah, I believe when they moved Gilbert up to the leadoff spot is really when they took off as a team. Is that first pitch gonna miss down for ball one? Moving Gilbert to the lead off JJ Bush to the to the two hole and that's those are two big threats right there right off the bat that pitch gonna miss gonna get a piece of the cat of the umpire though um, can't feel good and you talk about those young men uh, uh, both Gonzalez and Bush and and perhaps Bush one of the hotter hitters coming into this weekend he's really uh, kind of taking off coach Marcelo talking about him last week before last week's series and he just did not let up um, over the last series so pretty pretty good little one-two punch right here and uh, you know the young man in the three-hole spot ain't not too uh, shabby yeah, not too either yeah, they, <laughs> they've actually got a lot of production though from that bottom of the lineup it's really what's what's uh, been striking some of these rallies they've been having absolutely so and the 2-0 pitch gonna be in there called strike one and the thing about the bottom of this lineup too, Justin, is is even when the hits aren't there, these guys will walk. They'll walk take, you're going to walk them, they'll walk. They're just going to find ways to get on base. Ball's going to be hit out to the second baseman, going to make the play for out number one. The line drive shot right to Gleinig. Gleinig did, really didn't have to move. Bring up second baseman number nine, Jeremiah Bush. And that's going to bring up J.J. Bush. The Carroll Tigers second baseman Bush, also a senior, and he leads the team batting 420 
34 hits in 81 at bats, 15 doubles, six triples, and a home run. He's driven in 24 runs, and he has scored 24 runs as well. First pitch in there for a strike. Didn't realize how tall Spencer was. That's an 0 1 pitch going to miss in the dirt. This is my first chance to see him pitch this year. First time I got to see him was in that Gregory Portland tournament. I believe it was week three. Saw him throw for the for the Wildcats and was very, very impressed with the young man and, and he's had quite a season. One one pitch. Curveball gonna stay away for ball two. Just missing on the outside. So two one count here to JJ Bush, senior second baseman. 2-1 pitch, going to miss down in the dirt. Ball three. Just waiting for that sun to go down. I thought right I put us on the now. I thought I put us on the right side and <laughs> it was going to keep us in the shade, but uh It's all good. No dice. I haven't <laughs> seen that thing all day, so Yeah, we're pretty happy to see her. Hope she stays around. <laughs> <laughs> Three one pitch. Curveball gonna be popped up to the left side. Shortstop and left fielder giving chase. Left fielder Delamonte wow. is gonna make the play in foul territory for out number two. Had to go a long way for that one. Had to worry about King sliding right there at his feet too, but Delamonte is making the play. That'll bring up the third baseman. Easton Hewitt, Hewitt only a sophomore. We've seen him play a really good third base this year for the Tigers. Even when they went through that tough tough stretch early in the season, he was he was making some nice plays over there. First pitch can be grounded to the third baseman. Actually, the shortstop gonna backhand, throw in the turf, gonna get there just in time. Nice play there from King. So Jackie for the King Tigers, using the turf as his friend right there. For the Tigers, no runs, no hits, no errors. No one left on base after winning to play. No score here in Cabinets Field. Last Vision Live will be right back. Lithia Chrysler Jeep Dodge and Ram of Corpus Christi is a proud supporter of South Texas Athletics. Come by and see us at 4313 South Staples in Auto Town. We'd like to wish all of the local teams the best of luck this season from your friends at Lithia Chrysler Jeep Dodge and Ram. Three six one hsblast.com, your newest source for Coastal Bend 5A baseball and football news. Matt Rogers, Jake Vasquez, George Vondercheck, Stu Duncan, and Pete Garcia. Positively spotlighting student athletes, coaches, programs, and schools through insightful features, video, game stories, stats, fan polls, schedules, rosters, and so much more. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. 361hsblast.com. Come check us out. Welcome back to the Stable Street Meat Market broadcast. Blue Jake Vasquez and Justin Perales with the call for you guys here in this one. No score after one inning of play. And for the for the Wildcats, they'll send up four, five, and six in the order: Spencer, Glynick, and Orell. So pitcher Robbie Spencer will lead things off. The senior batting 367 coming into the ball game. 11 hits in 30 at bats. Four doubles, one triple, two home runs. He's driven in 11. You guys have been active on the chat. Uh, get to that here in a sec. First pitch swinging, grounded over to Martinez. The throw to first base is in time. One pitch, one out. It's going to bring up Gage Gleinig. Second baseman number one, Gage Gleinig. Gleinig.
Heinig, the senior second baseman, batting 278 coming in. 22 for 79. Looks at ball one, just a bit outside. Five doubles, three triples, and a home run. 15 runs driven in. Dudney delivers. There's a strike. One and one. I want to say hello to Jay Stone checking in. Pita Cunha as well. Manuel Zamora rooting for Gregory Portland. Actually rooting for both teams from Victoria, Texas. <laughs> yeah, PR Weatherman on there too. Miss, miss outside. Mr. Magic 81. Yeah, checking in. 78 degrees, winds from the east at 11 miles per hour. Partly cloudy skies, and I'll add that the sun has uh, peaked through. So thank you, Magic 81. 2-1 Two -one pitch, going to be popped up into shallow center field, going back Martinez, and it looks like the shortstop will make the grab. So two up, two down for first baseman Kobe Orell. Get you some numbers on Kobe real quick. We can come back to the chat. Senior batting 353. 23, or actually, I'm sorry, 30 for 85. Three doubles and 23 is the number of runs he's driven in. So Kobe Orell, first pitch swinging. Grounded right back to Dudney. Underhand toss to Cardenas at first base. And the Wildcats again go quietly. No runs, no hits, no errors. No one left on base. After an inning and a half, no score here. Tigers coming to bat. Last Vision Live from Cabinus Field. Johnny Luna with Auto Nation Chevrolet, Cadillac, GMC, and Buick, inviting everyone into the dealership to take a look at the inventory, including brand new 2021 models. But wait, there's more. Auto Nation also has the biggest selection of pre owned cars in town. Free window tint with purchase of any vehicle when you mention you heard this ad on Blast Vision Live. Come and get sold and rolled. When I think of Snowball, I think of the hot corpus summers of my childhood and trips to the original Snowball located at 3830 Baldwin. And now, Snowball 2 has taken that Corpus Christi staple to the south side. Located at 7114 Saratoga, they're your one-stop shop for your favorite snacks. Frito pies, hot Cheetos and cheese, hot dogs, pickles, candy apples, and ice cream. And of course, those amazing snowballs you remember from back when you were a kid. Welcome back to the Stable Street Meat Market broadcast booth. Jake Vasquez and Justin Perales moving right along. We're headed to the bottom of the second inning, no score in this one. The Carroll Tigers sending up four, five, and six in the order. Cardenas, Matridis, and Cantu. Mr. Harvey on the on the music. Let's see who else we got on the chat here. Justin got Mike Williams uh, rooting for the Gregory Portland Wildcats. Jay Stone going to be in Austin Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Sunday attending NASCAR. Going to be checking in on Blast Vision. <laughs> Appreciate that. Rudy Trevino checking in. Clear skies in San Antonio, good thing. Seth checking in as well, and Deborah Esquivel, go Tigers. That first pitch gonna miss in the turf, ball one. Here to the first baseman, Diego Cardenas. Thank you everybody who hit us up on the chat, we appreciate you guys. 1-0 pitch gonna miss down for ball two. Wanna remind everyone, uh, hit that subscribe button and that way it will notify you when we go on the air. You guys won't miss any of the action. So don't forget to hit the subscribe button on the YouTube channel. And uh, if you're watching right now, hit us up on the chat. We'll give you a little shout out. We'd love to know where everybody's watching from. Two old pitch going to be hit up the middle. Second baseman going to backhand it. Throw over to first. Going to be in time. What a play. Wow, that was Glenick nice. right there. Or Glenning. Yeah, Gage Glinig. Glinig. My bad. Glinig. I'll get that right. <laughs> yeah, nice, nice play right there. I took his time a little bit. Uh, planted that back foot and fired it. 
pretty pretty sure of the arm right there and made a good throw and, and got it done. So Nick Matridis will come to the plate. Let's get you some numbers on Nick. Talked about the game two pitcher for the Wildcats. Uh, Nick Matridis will be the game two starter for the Carroll Tigers. That's pretty certain right there. First pitch going to be swung on a miss for strike one. Matridis batting 353 coming into the ball game. 36 for 102. So 36 hits and 102 at bats. Seven doubles and a triple. 20 runs driven in. That 0-1 pitch going to miss just outside. Nice slider there. And the oohs and ahs are starting already. Yeah. <laughs> we hear them every game from every team. You definitely expect that. We have fun with it up here. That's for sure. 1-1 one, one pitch. Going to miss down. So far, early on, seen a lot of balls get by Walker Yannick. You don't see that very often. Maybe having trouble seeing right now. So 2 1 count here to Nick Matridis. 2 1 pitch going to be hit into shallow right field. Right fielder going to come in, and this ball's going to drop. From an error there from Valles. Going to allow Nick Matridis to reach first base. That was really strange. I wonder if just took his eyes off it for a minute. Um, maybe the sun, Justin, I don't know. Yeah, look. Not sure what happened there, but. So one on, one out for EJ Cantu. Let's get you some numbers on Cantu. Cantu bats from the left side. First pitch, Cantu gonna be fouled back for strike one. Batting 343 coming into the ball game. 23 for 67. Six doubles and 13 runs driven in for the sophomore Cantu. Kim, Kim Childs checking in, uh, rooting for the Cats. Young man we know a little bit, James Pedales checking in. Someone got a birthday tomorrow. 0-1 pitch, going to miss for ball one. So one ball, one strike. Rudy Hernandez checking in. Matthew Bombersbach. One, one pitch, one on a miss for strike two. Deborah commenting on the weather, and I think it is pretty crazy how the weather cleared up. I mean, I... There were points earlier in the day where I thought, man, there, there was a tornado. <laughs> <laughs> My house was in a tornado, I thought, and uh, it's just crazy how they were able to get this field. One, two pitch, just going to miss up. Yeah, I showed up to school, and they uh, asked us to start releasing the students. Parents came to pick them up, and I was back home by 1.30. It was, it was kind of nice. With only seven days of school left, that's really, it's real nice. <laughs> <laughs> Gonna have a pickoff attempt, not in time. Cynthia Moreno checking in from work. Bonnie Walker checking in from Round Rock, watching her nephews, the Glynicks, the twins. Gage over there patrolling second base right now. Crystal Goss checking in. She's back. 2-2 <laughs> two, two pitch. Going to be hit the outside for strike three. So with two outs, that'll bring up the shortstop, Christian Martinez. I think I saw Keevan walking around here somewhere. So Yeah, there's a couple of Ray up. Texans right now walking in. I see a bunch of guys with blonde hair. I don't think Keevan... Has blonde hair, but he may have gone blonde, <laughs> man. But yeah, some Ray Texans in the house. 
First pitch going to miss for ball one. Those guys will get going tomorrow night against Veterans Memorial. And uh, that ball game is 7 p.m. first pitch. Rudy and Justin will have that ball game for you guys. I will be in Ingleside. That's your short trip tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, that's the short one. <laughs> have another pickoff attempt. I thought it was going to be in Alice, but uh, weather said nope. And so instead, uh, I will follow TM and Alice out to San Antonio for their one-game playoff tomorrow night. I believe we go at 7 p.m. That 1-0 pitch going to miss outside. Ball two. So two balls, no strikes. Randy Reyna checking in, listening from Elgin, Texas. Magic 81 with, with the TSO chants. <laughs> I can't imagine what that would have been about. <laughs> 2 0 pitch can be hit in the center field. Malachi Lott giving chase. He is going to camp under it and make the play. That, that young man can cover some ground. Yeah, he did. The ball was hit hard. So for the Tigers, it's no runs on no hits. There was one error committed by the Portland Wildcats. And uh, for GP, it'll be Gonzalez, Talamantes, and Valles. You listen to Blast Vision Live. Chris Bernal with LV21 Tournaments US SSA Baseball, hosting the best youth baseball tournaments in South Texas. Best youth baseball tournaments in South Texas at the all new turf fields in Portland, Texas. LV21, supporting high school baseball in the Coastal Bend area. Cleared up some. Okay. His mom said he's there, no blonde hair. <laughs> Looking to expand your customer base? Hit a home run and advertise right here on Blast Vision. For more information, contact Jake Vasquez at 361-434-0705. That's 361-434-0705. Join us and show your support for South Texas Athletics. Welcome back to the Stable Street Meat Market broadcast booth. Jake Vasquez, Justin Perales, and Justin and I, I need to fix the uh, virtual scoreboard here. I haven't even made a change yet. That's exactly why I didn't do it. How about, <laughs> <laughs> how about top of the third inning we go? And uh, I was checking the chat here during the, the half inning, and uh, Crystal God says, Keevan is here, no blonde hair yet. Erica Patino. Rudy for the Carroll Tigers and for Christian Martinez Burro. Cameron Jonesy, I believe that is Coach Jonesy's dad watching in from Elgin, Texas as well. Rooting for the Wildcats. Speaking of the Wildcats, here in the top of the third inning, they'll bring up seven, eight, nine in the order. Gonzalez, Talamantes, and Valles. And it's going to be designated hitter Daniel Gonzalez who will lead things off. That's for the shortstop, Jackie King. So, Gonzalez looks at strike one. Gonzalez, a senior, batting 211 on the season, 15 hits and 71 at bats. A double and two triples. He's driven in 17. And Dudney. Misses outside with the 0-1. So a ball and a strike on Gonzalez. Gonzalez bats from the left side against the right-hander, Dudney. And that pitch is going to be driven out to center field. Gilbert Gonzalez is there. And he'll make the grab it's one Gonzalez away. To Gonzalez right there. It's going to bring up the left fielder, Brayden Talamantes. Talamantes, another senior, senior heavy lineup here for the Gregory Portland Wildcats. He's batting 229 coming into the ballgame. 16 hits and 70 at bats. Four doubles, a triple, and a home run. And 12 runs driven in for Talamantes. And Dudney misses low and outside with the first pitch, 1 0. Oh. Just missing there. Good pitch. A 
little excuse me swing right there by Talamantes. And the count evens up at one and one. Got Daniel Lopez watching from San Antonio. Taft Raider Baseball watching. Wishing all of the South Texas teams good luck. Thank you so much, Daniel. Swing and a miss on the one-two pitch. On a one-one pitch, one-two now the count. Got a little ahead of myself right there. <laughs> Thank you guys so much, everyone who's checking in with us. We appreciate that. One, two pitch, up and out, two and two. Usually you're behind, so that's pretty good that you're ahead. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe working by yourself. Yeah. <laughs> Talk to a thing or two. You got <laughs> to stay ahead. I tell you what, I listened to that three-game series you did against Carroll, and I got to give you props because I'm sure you were exhausted. That Fouled off. The first round of the playoffs, and... You're you're you sounded good, but I could t I could just tell I, I've known you long enough that uh, yeah, I was a little tired up there. That uh, I, I yeah, can yeah only we imagine <laughs> we haven't done this kind of stuff since uh since the uh, beginning of the season. The first three <laughs> rounds, we got all those tournament games, yeah. and then you kind of relax a little bit, you know. Not that we don't try hard early in the season, but right, it's definitely a different atmosphere in the playoffs and uh, the level of excitement. Yeah, it was it was hard to not be excited <laughs> about those games over in Rio Grande City, though. As tired as I was, man, they were just really, really good ball games. Baseballs flying out of the ballpark all over the place. It was hard not to be excited. Defense was I'm phenomenal sure. on both teams. I'm sure you caught some Z's on the way home. Oh, I did. I did. I absolutely passed out. Poor Cindy, she had to drive us home because I, I, I was radio done. Up on that one. <laughs> <laughs> That 2-2 pitch misses up. Full count. Here comes the 3-2 pitch. Foul straight back. Ball well, actually got. <laughs> I think that's the first time I've seen a foul ball actually get through the net. <laughs> kind of went off the top here and shot down in the fans in the first row. Just missing. Low and outside with that full count. So a walk issued to Talamantes and the first base runner of the ball game for the Gregory Portland Wildcats. One on one out for the right fielder Andrew Vias. A thing, the thing that happens when you when you have one of your power RBI guys in the leadoff spot is you get opportunities like you see right here with Vias the nine hole. If you can just find a way to get Talamantes to second base, that gives Walker Yannick a chance to drive him in. Dudney misses outside with the first pitch. 1-0 and the count. Baez just a sophomore batting 200 on the season. Seven hits in 35 at-bats. And he's driven in three runs. There's a strike. Magic81 on the chat asking, what's the deepest the GP baseball team has gone in their playoff history? And am I right to say this is the furthest that Carroll has gone since 2011? And I actually don't know the answer to either one of those questions <laughs> right there. Pitch on the way. A bunt popped up. Third base side. I and believe it's Carroll went foul. either three or four years straight to the, what, was it to the state tournament or to the? They, I believe they went three years straight. Three won years it the straight. first time and went back twice. Uh, they won in 2010, went back in 2011, went back in 2012. So... Yeah, since 2012 then. So since the 2012. Good call right there, Justin. That's, that's a good way to figure that one out. And Magic 81 says, sorry, I meant 2012. Yeah, oh, there you go. Yeah, I remember that group was juniors when I was a senior. One-two pitch can be hit foul. Ball's going to get out of play. So Valle is staying alive here. One two pitch on the way, swinging a miss to throw down to second base is in time. How about that? Carroll Tiger fans, a strike them out, throw them out. Double play to end the inning and end the threat. 
so we will head to the bottom of the third inning. No runs, no hits, no errors. No one left on base. Still no score in this one. Carol Tiger, Carol, Carol Tigers coming to bat when we come back. Last Vision Live from Cabinets Field. Looking to expand your customer base? Hit a home run and advertise right here on Blast Vision. For more information, contact Jake Vasquez at 361-434-0705. That's 361-434-0705. Join us and show your support for South Texas Athletics. With the sun staying out later and the weather getting warmer, get out and grill. Staple Street Meat Market has the best selection of quality meats for your next barbecue. Known for their Angus beef fajitas, smoked sausages, and new authentic family recipe, Bonle brand spices. Like us on Facebook and never miss our weekly specials. We're located at 7626 South Staple Street, number 111 in King's Crossing. But coming soon, our new location at 7418 South Staple Street is set to open in early 2022. Stable Street Me Market, proud supporters of South Texas Athletics. Welcome back to the Stable Street Me Market broadcast booth. Jake Vasquez, Justin Perales, bottom of the third inning we go. No score and what a play to end the top of the third inning. And Jay Stone made a comment on the chat. What a throw by the catcher. And I'll just remind you guys, uh, that young man, a freshman, Dave Palomo. And it was a perfect throw. And uh, yeah, Day, a young man that uh, I had the pleasure of coaching this summer, and he he's play, he played a lot of big games. And has, he hadn't even got to high school yet, and he was playing in big games. And um, I had I knew I knew, we knew that wherever he ended up going, he was going to have a good chance into playing because he, he's just he's just really good behind the plate like that. And uh, it's, it's going to be fun to see this guy grow. He's not the biggest guy yet, <laughs> but definitely and plays a lot bigger than he looks. And I got a chance to talk to him and Christian Martinez. It was kind of cool to interview the two of them together. The oldest uh, and the youngest. <laughs> right, right. You know, that that's, that's uh, I, t I told him they're like, you know, the bookends, right? You know, the, the senior in his last season and the freshman in his first season. And, and the coolest thing about that, you know, speaking of Christian. Dave Palomo, he'll, he'll, he'll uh, lead things off here. First pitch going to get just fouled down third base line. The cool thing about Christian Martinez, he, he knows what it feels like to start as a freshman. That's what I was going to say, yeah. And and that's what we got a chance to talk about. I said, you know what, I talked about, you know, Justin and I talked about how, man, it feels like you've been here forever, Christian. We've seen you, you know, since freshman year starting for the Tigers. And that's what we're going to be talking about with Dave Palomo three years from now in his senior season about how, you know, we've seen him since freshman year. Oh, one pitch. Curveball going to be in there called strike two. Let's get you some numbers on Palomo. Yeah. Oh, two pitch here. Going to be swung on and miss for strike three. So it'll be a strikeout to start this inning. That'll bring up the left fielder, number two, Chris Chavez. So Palomo came in batting 370, five doubles, three triples, 30 hits, and 81 at bats, and 21 runs driven in. Seen this young man swinging a hot bat lately. He, uh, as he's going to actually deposit <laughs> right on the left field. field, so making me look good there. I believe that is the first <laughs> hit of the ball game for either team. So it'll be a one out single there. That'll bring up the center fielder, Gilbert Gonzalez. And there we go. You know, talk about the nine hole hitter and the production that they've gotten out of the sophomore, Chris Chavez. Um, and that is has been the difference, like you said, you know, even Coach Marcelo admitting that that's been the difference for them. You know, that production that they've gotten from the bottom, the bottom third of their lineup, and they and they flip it over to to the big dogs, Gilbert Gonzalez, Bush, and Hewitt. Gonzalez 0 for 1, lined out to the second baseman his first time up. Ball's going to be hit hard. It's going to get by the shortstop King. They're going to hold Chavez there with the big arm of Malachi Lodd center field. So back-to-back so -back singles, and that'll bring up J.J. Bush. Like we mentioned, the guy this guy. He lives for this moment, uh, these moments. Uh, and he's one of the hottest hitters 
coming into this weekend, I would have to say, you know, he's really been swinging the, the stick well and uh, good spot right here. Got a runner in scoring position. Chavez can run. And that's going to draw a visit uh, from Coach Jonesy. So he's going to come out to talk to. Try to slow it down a little bit. Uh, JJ, he's 0 for 1 in the ball game. He flew out to left field his first time. And I believe uh, it, the catch was made by Talamantes in foul territory. A great running grab by Talamantes that first time up for Bush. So he hit the ball hard. But it was slicing. It would have been foul either way. But Talamantes made a great play and got him out. But a big spot here for the senior. First and second with one out. Sarah Chavez checking in, rooting for GP. <laughs> Randy Reyna said that <laughs> the fajitas from Staple Street Meat Market look delicious. And yeah, uh, yeah, well, man, every time I see that commercial, I, I, <laughs> I get hungry. <laughs> So here we go, J.J. Bush digs in. First pitch going to miss away for ball one. I think I saw something on the chat. There was a question asked, uh, what do we feel about a one-game series between Rouse and Cedar Park? And those one-game series are very, very tricky. The 1-0 pitch can be swung on and missed. Uh, as everybody knows, baseball is it's a crazy game, and a lot of crazy things happen, especially in a one-game series. Uh, been a part of quite a few when I was playing and coaching, and uh, those are those are probably the toughest games. As that pitch gonna miss down for ball two. Normally, you will see a one game a team go for a one game series when they feel like they can't match up, you know, pitcher for pitcher with the opposing team, and they're gonna they're gonna roll the dice on a one game and and see what happens. And sometimes it pays off, and sometimes it doesn't. 2-1 pitch, going to miss outside, ball three. Hit a spot there, but a little bit down. So Bush right here in a good hitter's count. Three-one pitch, going to be a curveball, going to miss up for ball four. So Bush. Gonna take first base there. That'll bring up a third baseman, Easton Hewitt. Gotta thank Coach Jonesy not stressing too much. Uh, still one pitch away. Gotta force out at any base now. You got your middle infielders playing back in double play depth, so that's what they're looking for right here. Ground ball, double play, get them out of the inning. First pitch can be in there, called strike one. Hewitt grounded out to short his first time up, so. Momentum, Jake, this is what we we talked about in the pregame show. Uh, this could be a big momentum swing either way here. 0-1 oh, pitch, gonna miss just outside for ball one. The umpire, not a big fan of the low outside. Seen a little bit more of the higher pitches called on the outside. So the 1-1 one, one pitch here to Hewitt. Going to be in there, called strike two. Tough pitch to take there, Jake. That's the spot you want to, that's the spot you want as a hitter right there. All it's going to take is a pop fly. And now you got Spencer ahead in the count. Well, you're going to see some gonna make you, here. Yeah, yeah going to make you hit his pitch now. One, two pitch. It's going to be fouled off. So Hewitt staying alive here. Actually went with a the fastball there, so missed his location. Got away with it. 
for the Tigers. They have Bush at first, Gonzalez at second, Chavez at third. One down here in the bottom of the third, no score. Game one of this best of three series between these two teams. Jake, I know you, you, you talked about it a lot in that last series, and uh, I mean, game one's very important in any series, but especially with the way the weather is, you just don't know. It could play factors. I mean, lucky for this series that they they're playing on a Wednesday, so they have a lot more days to figure it out. One two pitch, come back curveball, gonna be called strike three. Hewitt gonna go down looking. That'll bring up the first baseman, Diego Cardenas. A big pitch right there from Spencer. Cardenas 0 for 1 in the ball game with a ground out to the second baseman, Gleinig, in his first at bat. Yeah, that was huge right there. You know, now, now a fly ball gets him out of the inning as opposed to perhaps, you know, a sack fly and a, and a run scored for the Carroll Tigers. So, yeah, a huge out right there for the Gregory Portland Wildcats. First pitch fastball. Mm. Ball one. <laughs> it looked like he wanted <laughs> to call that one. He thought about I, uh, it. Almost jumped the gun there. <laughs> Maybe a little bit look good. Maybe look a little good. bit low. Look good from up here, but we're, we are as far as away as you can get. You are right about that, my man. <laughs> or high up, I guess. Is we have a different view. So 1 0 count here to Diego Cardenas. One zero pitch, curveball in there, called strike one. You know that they asked us, you know, today, you know, that the front booth was going to be open. Did we want to set up in the booth and? couple of things crossed my mind you know one was the breeze blew through here and I thought man it feels really good yeah. out here the other thing was the man we are the <laughs> atmosphere that's that's another thing and then the third thing is we're dead center man we yeah we got a great view here you go up to one of them booths and you got a pole in your face gonna have that one one pitch gonna be fouled off to the right side so yeah I know definitely we only had a chance to call one game up there and me and you were leaning looking off around the side the yeah <laughs> we're <laughs> looking around the poles trying to Trying to see if we could, one base is covered all the time. When you're up in the booth, one base is covered all the time. So you pick your poison. one game where we couldn't even see the batter. <laughs> <laughs> we couldn't see that the umpire was calling. Yeah, we couldn't see what they were calling. So I don't know. I, I, I really like it out here. I think we got the best seat in the house, man. So one, two count. Spencer in the stretch, the one, two pitch. We're gonna miss for ball two. Man, great job right there by Yannick. He tried to frame it, and, you know, that's one of the things that Coach Jonesy talked about, Walker Yannick. And Coach Jonesy almost ran onto the field there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he did. Definitely shows a level of excitement. And he talked in the press conference yesterday about Yannick's arm and his ability to throw out runners, and he said, I think what's more important is his ability to steal strikes. Two-two pitch, swung on and missed for strike three. The Wildcats will escape there on no runs, on two hits, no errors, three runners left on. As we head into the top of the fourth inning, it'll be the top of the lineup for the Wildcats. 0-0 zero, zero ball game. You're listening to Blast Vision Live. Rick Signs with Z-Bart of Corpus Christi is a proud supporter of South Texas Athletics. Stop by their location at 4535 Everhart for auto alarms, window tint, diamond gloss, auto detailing, rhino linings, and more. Call 361-985-9274 for more information or to make an appointment. Z-Bart, it's us or rust. Lithia Chrysler Jeep Dodge and Ram of Corpus Christi is a proud supporter of South Texas Athletics. Come by and see us at 4313 South Staples in Autotown. We'd like to wish all of the local teams the best of luck this season from your friends at Lithia Chrysler Jeep Dodge and Ram. HSBlast.com, your newest source for Coastal Bend 5A baseball and football news. Matt Rogers, Jake Vasquez, George Vondercheck, Stu Duncan, and Pete Garcia. 
positively spotlighting student athletes, coaches, programs, and schools through insightful features, video, game stories, stats, fan polls, schedules, rosters, and so much more. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, 361hsblast.com. Come check us out. Welcome back to the Staple Street Meat Market broadcast. Booth Jake Vasquez and Justin Pedales. Three innings of play, no score here in this ballgame. Top of the order for the Wildcats. It's going to be Yannick Dow. Yannick Wap. <laughs> All right, let me, let me start over. How about Yannick Lott and Dow? There you go. <laughs> first pitch in there for a ball. And, uh, you know, we saw, man, first the Carroll Tigers, you know, in the in the top of the third inning, an inning ending double play, strike them out, throw them out, got the Tiger fans pumped up. But how about Robbie Spencer? And, uh, you know, bases loaded with one out and back-to-back -back strikeouts to, you know, escape that jam. And these guys... Boy, they're all in, both teams. Pretty fun to watch. 1-1 one, one count. Here it comes. And Dudney misses up. 2-1 the count. Yannick 0-1 for one in the ball game. Flew out to right in his first at bat. Dudney delivers up and in. 3-1. And, and I noticed... Dudney pretty much pitching from the stretch the whole ball game and maybe just uh, something he feels a little bit more comfortable with. Actually, both pitchers, both pitchers working from the stretch. Um, D DJ, something he's done as long as I've known him, last two years. Yeah, right, yeah. 31 pitch going to miss outside. And you just put a guy on that has 31 stolen bases. So, got to think the, number, the percentage of him running is pretty high right here. It's not if, it's when. <laughs> but a pretty good. Pretty good arm behind the plate in Palomo, so should be interesting to see. And and these two teams know each other well. Um, you know, the stolen bases was definitely talked about yesterday in the press conference. So and and right away a throw over to first base and a little bit of a wild throw over to first base, but Cardenas able to at least get a glove on it. And uh, otherwise, you know, there you go, runner in scoring position, nobody out. Something you don't see too often. I something that caught my eye. We talked about the Cedar Park coaches here, and, and there is a Rouse coach here, and <laughs> they're over here mingling and stuff. It's something you don't see too much. <laughs> um, I guess you, I mean you would see it during a regular season, but first pitch to Lot misses. Gotta say, I wouldn't want to talk to the other coach. <laughs> yeah, they seem pretty friendly with each <laughs> other. Seen coach, seen coach, seen coach Jaeger walk into the building too. Uh, that is not a surprise. Coach, Hag uh, Coach Hagen, Coach uh, Jaeger, you pretty much see him at every game in Corpus all season long. 2-0 the count on Lot. He's 0-1 for 1 with a strikeout. And that pitch. Going to miss yeah, outside for ball three. So just, just talking about what I talked about, momentum. You, your team gets out of a big big uh, situation and then they come back and you, you walk the first guy and that's that, that you just feel that momentum kind of leaning over to one side Paloma goes and has has a word with Dudney it comes a 3-0 pitch and it's gonna miss low and inside so back-to-back -back walks to start the top of the fourth inning and a good start for the Wildcats. This is exactly what they want. And they want their big dogs up with runners on. And they've got a couple of guys on that can really run. In Malachi Lott at first base and Walker Yannick at second base. Easton Dowell to the plate. And he is 0 for 1 with a fly out to left. On a great play by Chris Chavez as well. So. These are definitely the guys they want on base. Definitely one of the guys that they would want at the plate right now. Dudney going to step off.
see Yannick dancing around over there at third base. The pitch is going to be fouled off. Jay Stone makes an interesting point. Uh, might only take one run to win this ball game, and that's that's absolutely right. Right now, the Wildcats, first and second, nobody out. 0-1 count here on Dow. Dudney with a quick peek over to second base, and they're going to throw back to second. Just keeping uh, Yannick. Keeping him honest over there at second base. He has been dancing around, <laughs> and I've seen him steal third. Yeah, they're not afraid to, to be aggressive. That's that's Coach Jonesy's mindset. There's a strike, 0-2. Oh Kaylee Jones watching also from Elgin, Texas. A lot of Gregory Portland fans in Elgin. I believe that is where Coach Jonesy's from. I know that is where his where his dad lives. O2 pitch popped up behind the plate. Palomo, he's there. One away. And that, you know, we talked about earlier when uh when Spencer got a big out, you know, out number one, and that is a big out right here for the Carroll Tigers. Yeah, now it's one one pitch away from getting out of this inning, so. A little chilly out here. Yeah, felt that. Decided to go with the pants today. Yeah, I wish I had. I uh, <laughs> made that mistake throughout the season too many times. Well, I thought it was just going to be stuffy and muggy, <laughs> and no, it turned it in, you know, it's cold. First pitch swinging, and that one's going to be driven out to right field and into the glove of Nick Matrides. He gets it in quickly, and Walker Yannick going to try and take third base, and he will. So the throw from Matrides, it's not a good one, and no one able to get to it in time. So Walker Yannick doing what he does best and takes third base, and now... The go-ahead run 90 feet away, but with two outs for Gage Glynick. What, what you do there, you just put the pressure on the catcher. Uh, he's done a great job all year, but he is he is young and pitcher as well. Throws a lot of sliders. It's it's you get a chance to score a run here. Yeah, first pitch, missing <laughs> low and outside, and he put him to work right away. Uh, <laughs> Got to think another guy at first base, uh, Malachi La. Will, will he will run. He's, he's going to take off. Like you said, it's, it's win, not if. Ready, Walker, get ready. They had him leaning there. They did the old first, the third to first, but not the best of throws. And you see the, the smile on Dudney's face. He wishing he could make that throw over. Knew they had him over there, but a lot. We, we told you, I mean, he's the center fielder for a reason. He can run, and he gets back quickly and there he goes what a block there from Palomo <laughs> <laughs> and a nice little a little dink right a there a little, little deceptive move right there by Palomo acting like the ball might have gotten away from him see if he could get Yannick to bite over there at third base but that's a spike fastball right there and that's that's a good job from Palomo Swing and a miss. Two and one to count. So a couple of guys that can really run at second and third. Malachi Lott at second. Walker Yannick at third. Two one count on Glynick. Here comes the pitch. And that's going to miss for ball three. So three and one to count. You got Kobe Orell on deck, and I've seen that guy come through clutch time and again, so swing and a miss. Full count. So maybe, I don't know, you know, pick your poison here, but I, I, yeah, I would say right here, he's going to see another slider. 
There it is. Swing and a three. miss. Man, these guys, uh, Justin, you talk about momentum, and we see it swinging back and forth like a pendulum. And these two pitchers really coming up huge in big spots. A couple of seniors battling it out. What a ball game we have. Scoreless through three and a half. You guys don't go anywhere. Blast Vision live from Cabinet Field. Johnny Luna with Auto Nation Chevrolet, Cadillac, GMC, and Buick inviting everyone into the dealership to take a look at the inventory, including brand new 2021 models. But wait, there's more. Auto Nation also has the biggest selection of pre-owned cars in town. Free window tint with purchase of any vehicle when you mention you heard this ad on Blast Vision Live. Come and get sold and rolled. When I think of Snowball, I think of the hot corpus summers of my childhood and trips to the original Snowball located at 3830 Baldwin. And now, Snowball 2 has taken that Corpus Christi staple to the south side. Located at 7114 Saratoga, they're your one-stop shop for your favorite snacks. Frito pies, hot Cheetos and cheese, hot dogs, pickles, candy apples and ice cream. And of course, those amazing Snowballs you remember from back when you were a kid. Welcome back to the Stable Street Meat Market broadcast booth. We head to the bottom of the fourth inning. No score in this ball game. It's been a great ball game between these two teams. Uh, both pitchers on it. Both teams, though, have threatened. Um, we've seen some good defensive plays. Got a little bit of everything you want, except the offense right now. But you got to tip your hat to these pitchers, man. They're they're getting it done for their teams. And a great ball game we got right here. Jake Vasquez and Justin Pedales with the call. Do up for the Tigers. Going to be five, six, and seven in the order. Matridis, Cantu, and Martinez leading things off here in the bottom of the fourth inning. And it will be Nick Matridis. Nick reached on an error his first time up, hit one out into right field. Kind of went in and out of the glove of Vias. But Matridis would be stranded there at first base. So he's 0 for 1. First pitch from Spencer. He's going to miss for ball one. Got an inside source on the nickname for Nick Matridis, and they called him McLovin. <laughs> <laughs> As that pitch is going to be jammed out. The first baseman going to come in and make the play for out number one. <laughs> so McLovin pops up for out number one. It's going to bring up EJ Cantu. And Cantu 0 for 1 with a strikeout. I want to say hello to Pita Cunha, Jay Styles and Cuts in the house. Those guys are jumping on board with us and, and we'll start running them tomorrow evening. So we want to thank those guys for jumping on board. They have sponsored with us before so we want to welcome them back. First pitch going to be a check swing. They're going to say he went around for strike one. Wind's starting to kick up here, Jake. Yeah, man. Got the. J I brought a jacket. Uh, thank you, Cynthia Moreno, for uh, making sure I <laughs> brought the jacket. Ball gonna be hit to the first baseman. First baseman gonna pick it up. That's Orell gonna touch first base in time for out number two. So Kobe Orell, kind of, kind of do it yourself here this inning so far. That'll bring up the shortstop, Christian Martinez. Martinez gave one a ride his first time, just hit it to the wrong part of the field. Possibly hit it, to, hit it to the wrong person on the field. And this young man with a nickname Burro. You can hear chance of Burro. He is a little donkey though. That guy can. He has some. He has a couple home runs this year that were no doubters. First pitch swung on and missed for strike one. I want to say hello to Jerry Carillo checking in, also from Elgin, listening in, rooting for the Wildcats. The whole city of Elgin, the whole town of Elgin listening in. Because Jonesy got a, got a fan, got the fans out. So I have a swing and a miss for strike two. I love it, man. I love it. Get your following, man. Get your people on board with you. and it means you're doing something right. That's right. So 0 2 count here to Martinez. They're going to say he did go around. Walker Yannick going to throw it over to first in time. 
for out number three. So for the Tigers, no runs, hits, or errors. No one left on base after four innings of play. Still no score. And the Wildcats coming to bat. Orel, Gonzalez, and Talamantes when we come back. Blast Vision live from Cabinets Field. Chris Bernal with LB21 Tournaments US SSA Baseball, hosting the best youth baseball tournaments in South Texas. Best youth baseball tournaments in South Texas at the all new turf fields in Portland, Texas. LB21, supporting high school baseball in the Coastal Bend area. Looking to expand your customer base? Hit a home run and advertise right here on Blast Vision. For more information, contact Jake Vasquez at 361-434-0705. That's 361-434-0705. Join us and show your support for South Texas Athletics. Welcome back to the Stable Street Me Market Broadcast booth. Jake Vasquez and Justin Perales, top of the fifth inning here at Cabinets Field. Still no score in this ball game. And I want to send a shout out to LB21 Tournaments. Uh, those guys jumping in with us last week. They've been with us before, so we want to welcome them back. Uh, hosting Perfect Game Tournaments. I need to update their commercial a little bit. We got Perfect Game on the graphic, but we need to update it. Uh, still, you know, as the, the, the old tournaments they used to be hosting anyway. So oh, uh, sure. LB21 hosting perfect game tournaments. We want to shout out to those guys. You know those guys a little bit as well. Yeah, no, definitely uh, get a chance to coach a lot of these kids over the summer, and, and, and it's a lot of fun. You get to meet different people. So Kobe Orell will step up. Little check swing over to Hewitt at third. The throw on the first base is in time. One pitch, one out. It's going to bring up the designated hitter, Daniel Gonzalez. Like to watch that young man play third base. He makes a lot of good plays. Shows, yeah. off, shows off the arm a little bit there, too. I love good defense, man. Well, I mean, who doesn't love good defense? But I, I mean, I almost think maybe I love defense more than offense. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> First nah, pitch <laughs> in the turf. <laughs> <laughs> nah, it's, it's fouled off one and one. You've had some real big moments, in some big time situations, Jake. And I'm still waiting for mine. This this uh, this playoff run. This is my. Second game, second game of the playoffs so far that I've been able to broadcast. Got a lot of stuff going on right now. Good foul back, one and two. Damon Zabella watching from the Valley, rooting for Gregory Portland. Javier Guzman checking in, listening from Alice, Texas. Rooting for the Coyotes on Friday night. Got a big, big one game series there. Oh, actually in San Antonio. Pitching the turf, two and two. And we will be there. I will have that game for you guys from San Antonio Crazy. so I'll get a chance to to see my buddy Javier Guzman <laughs> over there. Wanna Crazy thing is those schools are like, what are they, 15 minutes away from each other? Yeah. <laughs> and now they have to drive two hours. All the way to hours. San Antonio. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I'm sure they'll, the fans will travel. 2 pitch misses yeah. outside, wishing full the, count. Wishing the best luck. Sorry, I cut you off there. Wishing the best luck to the Alice Coyotes and as well as the Teloso Midway uh, I think Warriors. 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 Yeah. Coach Akers, a good friend of mine. Doing the good things over there. I want to say is that pitch misses outside for ball four. I think it's their first time. Right. Uh, getting to the third round. I, I believe it's their first time in school history getting to the third round of the playoffs for Teloso Midway. So, yeah, definitely g doing some good things over there at, at Teloso Midway in the Alice Coyotes. One of those teams that every year they got a chance. So it should be fun. Should be a fun ball game. 
Peter Cunha asking for some pitch counts. Let's give you some unofficial pitch counts. Uh, we got DJ Dudney. This next pitch will be number 64. It's unofficial. Let's see if we can check the, see if we're on it. Looks like I'm one pitch ahead of what they have. First pitch missed for a ball. So around <laughs> 64 pitches. 1-0 pitch fouled straight back. We're usually pretty close. I want to say that give us a Spencer is plus one or plus or minus one or two. 52 is what it looks like it says up there. Let's see if we can see what we have for him. We've got him at 52. Perfect. Yeah. So 52 for Spencer. And a pop-up into right field coming in Matridis and he'll make the grab and uh, throw down to first base so Gonzalez has Very to slide back throw. in there <laughs> we've seen already one ball get by the second baseman Matridis, Matridis not afraid to throw the ball but two down here for Andrew Vice gotta want to be a little bit more careful you don't want to give any any more extra chances to the Wildcats. Pickoff move to first base, not in time. And again, throw a little bit wild. Cardenas does a great job to get to it. Just missing outside with that pitch. 1-0 the count on Baez. Rudy Trevino finally off of work. And Doesn't getting a like chance it, to, yeah, yeah, he was, of, <laughs> he was on it earlier. <laughs> Hope nobody from H-E-B is listening in. <laughs> 1-0 pitch, grounded to the shortstop, Martinez, over to second base in time for out number three. So the Wildcats strand a runner here in the top of the fifth, still no score. Do up for the Tigers, Palomo, Chavez, and Gonzalez. You guys don't go anywhere. Blast Vision Live, Cabinet Field. With the sun staying out later and the weather getting warmer, get out and grill. Staple Street Meat Market has the best selection of quality meats for your next barbecue. Known for their Angus beef fajitas, smoked sausages, and new authentic family recipe, Ponle brand spices. Like us on Facebook and never miss our weekly specials. We're located at 7626 South Staple Street, number 111 in King's Crossing. But coming soon, our new location at 7418 South Staple Street is set to open in early 2022. Stable Street Me Market, proud supporters of South Texas Athletics. Rick Signs with Z-Bart of Corpus Christi is a proud supporter of South Texas Athletics. Stop by their location at 4535 Everhart for auto alarms, window tint, diamond gloss, auto detailing, rhino linings, and more. Call 361-985-9274 for more information or to make an appointment. Z-Bart, it's us or rust. Welcome back to the Stable Street Meat Market broadcast booth in the fifth inning stretch here. They just started doing a little fifth inning stretch kind of thing. Uh, started that last week. i would never seen them do that before. And they do a little uh, take me out to the ballpark and deep in the heart of Texas. Harvey, Harvey, Harvey got <laughs> it going on up there. He'll let you know about it, too. So bottom of the fifth, no score here in this one. And for the Tigers, 8-9-1, and one, Palomo, Chavez, and Gonzalez. So the freshman catcher, Palomo, digs in. First pitch, going to miss inside ball one. 0 for 1 in the ball game with a strikeout. Want to say hello to Seth Martinez, young man watching the ball game. That pitch can be chopped to the third baseman. Dow going to pick it up, fire over to first. Going to be a high throw. Going to get by the first baseman. Walker, Yannick backing it up, though. So we'll see what they roll that. I know what I would roll it, but we'll see. See what they officially rule it as. And see Looks if like they put it up one. there. They give that a hit. So, 
No comment on that. Yeah, so the official <laughs> score is a hit. <laughs> and I think that Ethan Dowell can tell himself that, that he should make that play. So, and We've seen him make it. I don't know how many times this season, and just uh, throw kind of got away from him right there, and There's the conference on the mound. Oh, caught that like a pop fly. Yeah, and that may have been the thinking You'll right that, there. Yeah. Just tried to throw, you know, just to, you know, try to make the throw too, too fast. Too quick, yeah. He, and uh, Palomo can run, so you know he, his his line of thinking was good, but it, it looked like for sure if it's a good throw, he had him. No, that was that was, and that was the right call to stay at first because Walker Yannick busted it down, get behind the first baseman, and. We know the kind of arm he has. Shout out to Renee Jonesy watching from Elgin, Texas as well. Hey, Elgin, Dang, Texas, showing a lot of love tonight. We appreciate all of you folks from Elgin watching. Got to go Texans on there too. That's that's for tomorrow. <laughs> we'll say that for tomorrow. But Lucidis bet is, uh, yeah. Yeah, we'll definitely we'd love to hear back from the Ray fans tomorrow as well, the ones that can't make it out. And Miss Rita Alanis. I got a chance to meet Rita a few years back as a first pitch to Chavez in there for a strike. Seen a couple Eagles and a couple Texans walking around here, so I know those guys are excited to get after it. Miss Rita Alanis, uh, I got when I met her, she was the, the Booster Club president for the Sitting Pirates. And so we called a lot of ball games for the Pirates, went to state with them back in 2017, and that's when, you know, she was there with, with the Pirates and a very, very nice lady and a huge Sin Pirate fan, and we want to wish the Sin Pirates the best of luck as well. Um, Any relation to Coach Alanis? No relation. I, and, and the funny thing was I asked her too if she – no relation, but, but they grew up it. together. They were friends. They I would run with it. I would have too. <laughs> that's a – a big name, big name in Sitton, Texas, doing big things over there with a young group of guys. Justin, it's it's they're they're a fun bunch to watch. Is that pitch is going to be fouled off out of play? They gave uh, a lot of people a scare. You would say last week, <laughs> yeah. But yeah. that happens in the playoffs. It's it's it doesn't matter what what you see on paper. It, you still got to go out there and play those games. And and they did a good job of just surviving. You got to survive in the playoffs and. Against Bernie, yeah, you, know, you can't read too much into the high into the headlines and stuff. We're gonna have a curveball, just gonna miss for ball two. And Everybody talking about sitting, talking about Cal Allen, and and those other teams are gonna take that personal and they're gonna give them their best shot. Absolutely agree with that. Bernie, I believe the young, I don't know the name of the young man, but in game one threw a young man who's going to Baylor next year, and uh, so you know they face a a good pitcher in a tight ball game they lost in game one and came back and had to win two and they were both tight ball games as well but you know good teams find ways to win Ooh, and, and different hard. ways to win and, and the Sin Pirates definitely a good team <laughs> by the reaction of the fans over there that might have got somebody's vehicle that ball was fouled off to the left side great crowd out here today yeah, very, very enthusiastic they're, they're fired up it's playoff baseball that pitch going to miss in the dirt. Nice block there from Yannick. Three balls, two strikes. Like somebody, let, uh, I think it was Magic 81. It's been since 2012 the Carroll Tigers have been this far, so they're, they're, their fans are excited. And they should be. Crazy to think that's almost. That's a long time. Almost 10 years right there. That's That makes me feel old. <laughs> <laughs> You are getting old. <laughs> the three-two pitch here to Chavez is going to miss outside ball four. So Tigers going to have two runners on. Just like the Wildcats in in the uh, top of the fifth. Now the Carroll Tigers with first and second, nobody top out. Tigers, Bring up top of the order, Gilbert, Gilbert Gonzalez. Gonzalez. I think it was the exact same scenario too, <laughs> Justin. Uh, you know, something like this and. You know, you get your big guns up, and, and you know, we, we've talked about it already in this ball game, but this bottom third of this Carroll Tiger lineup, big cut right there. Yeah, he was trying to, he was trying, he was to, trying to put, put that three ball on the, the board. Field. <laughs> yeah, uh, but he's capable of it too. This bottom third of the, of, the, of the Tiger lineup, it's so important that they continue to do what they've been doing and, and so far done a good job here in this ball game. 
going to have a swing and a miss for strike two. So 0 2 count here to Gilbert Gonzalez. He's going to step out, take a deep breath. Gonzalez is going to call timeout. A lot of excitement at Carroll High School. Got their baseball team doing really well and their, their uh, softball team as well. And softball, one really round ahead of baseball. Yeah. So those those Maybe young ladies in the... Start tomorrow, I believe, is what I read. Semifinals. I think they're playing out in Jordanton, I think. Unless they had to change the sights. 0-2 pitch down the middle. Called strike three. Another big strikeout for Spencer. I mean, both of these pitchers, Justin, just seems like, you know, they get runners on, they just get tougher. It's going to bring up J.J. Bush. J.J. Bush. I believe he is 0 for 1 on the day with the walk. Pop fly out. Light out to foul territory. First pitch can be fouled back. J.J. Bush is a warden commit facing Robbie Spencer, who is going to Texas A&M Kingsville. Same thing, Robbie. Same thing. You, know, you and I in the half inning talking about how quickly this game is going, but as quickly as it's going, uh, no runs on the board. We could still be here all night. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The 0-1 count here to Bush. Oh, one pitch, going to be called strike two. He's been giving that outer half of the plate all night, though. Uh, yeah, hit his spot, too. Catcher set up right there, and he hit the glove. Makes it look a little bit better, but like you said, he has been calling that pitch. So 0-2 oh, count here to Bush. I'd go, I'd go even further out there, see. See how much he'll give see you. See how much he'll give. Slider, swing and a miss for strike three. <laughs> Robbie Spencer, first two Tigers get on base. So first and second, nobody out and back-to-back -back strikeouts of two big Tiger hitters right there. Like I said, it just seems like he gets tougher as, uh, as the game has gone on, but even tougher with runners on. And so he'll face Easton Hewitt here, first and second, two outs. Easton Hewitt looking to pick himself up here. First pitch, smoke to the right side, foul. Just like that, Robbie, just like that. Michael Espinosa on the chat. Want to welcome him aboard. Says you need a bunt in this type of game, and we haven't seen the small ball just yet. I think, I think we saw one bunt attempt, and he got popped up into foul territory. Oh, one pitch going to be hit to the first baseman, Orell. Orell going to pick it up, touch first base in time for out number three. So for the Tigers, no runs on one hit. There were no errors, and two men left on base. Still no score. After five innings of play here at Cabinets Field, you guys don't go anywhere. Blast Vision Live. We'll be right back. Lithia Chrysler Jeep Dodge and Ram of Corpus Christi is a proud supporter of South Texas Athletics. Come by and see us at 4313 South Staples in Autotown. We'd like to wish all of the local teams the best of luck this season from your friends at Lithia Chrysler Jeep Dodge and Ram. three six one hsblast.com your newest source for coastal bend 5a baseball and football news matt rogers jake vasquez george vondercheck Stu duncan and pete garcia positively spotlighting student athletes coaches programs and schools through insightful features video game stories stats fan polls 
schedules, rosters, and so much more. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, 361hsblast.com. Come check us out. Johnny Luna with Auto Nation Chevrolet, Cadillac, GMC, and Buick, inviting everyone into the dealership to take a look at the inventory, including brand new 2021 models. But wait, there's more. Auto Nation also has the biggest selection of pre owned cars in town. Free window tint with purchase of any vehicle when you mention you heard this ad on Blast Vision Live. Come and get sold and rolled. Welcome back to the Stable Street Meat Market broadcast booth. Jake Vasquez, Justin Perales with the call for you. Top of the sixth inning, no score. Top of the order for the Wildcats. And the first pitch from Dudney in there for a strike. Walker Yannick, the batter. Yannick 0 for 1 in the ball game with a fly out and a walk. And that one is driven out to right field. Matridis, ooh. <laughs> Makes the grab. One away. Maybe he didn't, uh, Matridis maybe didn't see it real good off the bat, but it was hooking. And last minute, that he kind of throws the glove up, gets the grab, makes the grab one away. Malachi Lott, first pitch swinging, fouls it straight back. You ready now, Malachi? You ready? Malachi 0 for 1 with a walk and a strikeout. That one is going to be driven out to left field, but slicing foul can get out of play. So 0 and 2 the count. The wind really picking up here, blowing right to left. That's pretty common here at Cavanis Field. And flags blowing pretty steady out there, and we can feel it here under the under the canopy as well. As that 0 2 pitch is going to miss in the turf, 1 and 2 the count. Two and two. These two teams split their games during district play, District 29-5A, with the Wildcats getting the win the first time they met up. That was in Portland, an eight-nothing ball game, and then the Tigers handing the Wildcats their first loss of the season it was a Saturday afternoon here, at Cabinets Field, and a ten-nothing five-inning victory for the Carroll Tigers. Just gets a piece of that one. So Lot just poking the bat out there, getting a piece of it. We'll do it again at two and two. Lot spoils another one and uh, another 2 2 pitch coming up. And that one is going to be lined into the glove of Christian Martinez, the shortstop, two up, two down. Easton Dow to the plate. Brings up third baseman. Number five, Game one of this best of three series. They will continue the series tomorrow night. No games on Friday. Gregory Portland Wildcats graduating on Friday, so no ball games on Friday. But they will play tomorrow, 7 p.m. in Ingleside. Dudney delivers a first pitch strike. Be interested to see, and I bet I could tell you how many first pitch strikes these two young men have thrown here in this ball game. One and 
one the count for Dudney. Ten first pitch strikes out of 19 batters faced. And for Robbie Spencer, 14 of the 21 he's faced. Ooh, just missing right there. Two and one. Carroll Tiger fans letting the home plate umpire know they did not agree. And they're going to peel down to the first base umpire to see if maybe Dow went around. But I don't think he saw it over. <laughs> he finally says says no, <laughs> but he may not have he may not have seen it. Four umpires, a four-man crew here in the playoffs, and that one is going to be driven out to right field, going over Matridis, and it's going to drop just foul. <laughs> Easton Dow just missing extra bases right there, although I don't know, Nick Matridis. Everybody, everybody. Kind of on their edge of their seat yeah, right there. Yeah, was up. First of all, the question was, does it have a chance to get out? And then, is it going to stay fair? But it's going to drop in foul territory over in the corner. Nick Matridis gave it a good chase. It's going to end up an even count. Two balls and two strikes. Two outs, bases empty. No score here in this one. Fouled off, quite an at bat here for Dow. <laughs> Another 2-2 pitch coming up. Just to let y'all know, Jake, Jake pulling out the towel, <laughs> or I mean a blanket. The blanket, got the blanket, oh, man. It's man. cold, man, my legs are cold. <laughs> 2-2 pitch, grounded to Martinez, fields and fires over to first, and it's going to get away from Gata than us on the second base is Easton Dow. See what the official call is here, and they haven't made the call just yet. Yeah, I think that's, that's an they're, error. They're going to give him an error. So an error on the throw by Martinez. So runner at second base with two outs for the Wildcat pitcher, Robbie Spencer. Robbie hit one hard last time up. Flew out to right field. He lined out to right field. These are where... These are where big players are made, Jake. Um, these these big moments right here. Senior. Looking for a senior step up at bat. And DJ Dudney looking for a senior step up moment on the mound. First, first pitch going to miss just outside. I want to say hello to Lisa Dow. She is a Carroll High School alumni, class of 76, but rooting for the Wildcats. And Easton Dow, got to be happy with he, what he just did right there. <laughs> Swinging a miss right there for Spencer, 1-1 one, one count. Tim Escamilla on the board. <laughs> got to be big in these moments. That's what he says. Trey Acosta listening in, rooting for the Wildcats. Younger brother on the team. Younger brother lovingly known as Dirt. <laughs> We've talked about that one. <laughs> I don't think so. That's what a name. <laughs> I think I'm going to start calling James that. One, one pitch. Pitch going to miss up. So two and one the count on Spencer. Some questions on the chat. Yeah, I did run up to actually see if they had water up in the booth and didn't want to come back mid mid at bat. So I kind of hung out over there with Mr. Art Green. <laughs> Ricky G said you were eating popcorn. I wish. Me I'm too. Hungry. Jay Stone said a hot dog. Y'all need to stop right now. Just just stop. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Three and one the count. Then to McDonald, DJ Dudney's aunt and uncle watching the game from New Caney. 
Saw someone was watching from Somerville. Thank you guys for checking in. 3-1 pitch, here it comes. And that one is going to be driven out to left field. Chavez going back, and he makes the grab up against the wall. Oh, my goodness. Robbie Spencer gave it a ride, but Chavez at the wall makes the grab. What a ball game we have, these two teams. It's who's going to flinch first, Justin, and so far no one has flinched. You guys don't go anywhere. Blast Vision Live in Cabinets Field. When I think of snowball, I think of the hot corpus summers of my childhood and trips to the original snowball located at 3830 Baldwin. And now, Snowball 2 has taken that Corpus Christi staple to the south side. Located at 7114 Saratoga, they're your one-stop shop for your favorite snacks. Frito pies, hot Cheetos and cheese, hot dogs, pickles, candy apples, and ice cream. And of course, those amazing snowballs you remember from back when you were a kid. Chris Bernal with LB21 Tournaments US SSA Baseball, hosting the best youth baseball tournaments in South Texas. Best youth baseball tournaments in South Texas at the all new turf fields in Portland, Texas. LB21, supporting high school baseball in the Coastal Bend area. Welcome back to the Stable Street Meat Market broadcast booth. Jake Vasquez and Justin Perales. Man, Justin, Ooh, you know. The, can't get this anywhere else, Jake. <laughs> that's right, man. That's what you said in the half inning. You can't get this anywhere else. And, I, man, I agree. And you picked a good one to come back and and join us for, man. Uh, what a ball game we have here between these two teams, the Gregory Portland Wildcats and the Carroll Tigers. And who's going to flinch first? Uh, man, we've seen these two pitchers really buckle down in big situations. We've seen some great defense. And, and we're starting to see some offense. It just the defense has been uh, spectacular on some of these plays, man. So what a ball game we have! You guys stick right here with us until we find out who's gonna win this one. And this is just game one, just game one of this series between these two teams. Four, five, and six do up here. First pitch swung on a miss for strike one. Oh, one pitch going to miss outside. Ball one. One ball, one strike. Vernon Weber checking in on the chat. Shout out Noah Villarreal listening in. John Wilson checking in. 1-1 one, one pitch, her ball called strike two. So one ball, two strikes. Christian Cervantes checking in. Rudy said, what a catch. We saw him some make, some make some great catches in Rio Grande City, and yes, he did, man. He, Chris Chavez over there in left field, flashing the leather in Rio one, Grande two. City. 1-2 pitch can be hit in the center field. Malachi Lott gonna get under it, make the play for out number one. So that'll bring up the right fielder, Nick Matridis. Brings up right fielder, number eight, Nick Matridis. We got Robbie Spencer unofficially at 73 pitches. Looks like they have him at 72 here, so we're close. First pitch, going to miss down, ball one. LR checking in, or maybe Christopher checking in. <laughs> <laughs> that pitch. I think he's talking about Chris Chavez out there. Ah, I got you. Yeah. Yeah, he does deserve a Christopher. <laughs> Just like that in all caps. <laughs> Ashley Gonzalez checking in on the chat board as well, cheering for the Wildcats and Coach Zepeda all the way from Hidalgo, Texas. Pitch to Matridis is going to be in there, called strike one. And 
looks like Danny Aguirre also checking in. Thank you guys so much. Uh, we're trying our best to keep up with you guys. You caught a good one. What a ball game here we've got going on tonight between these two teams. 2-1 two, pitch, curveball in there, call strike two. Justin mentioning in the pregame, you know, the the story for the Carroll Tigers was was that that Cinderfella, if you you know, if you if you go <laughs> if you go at <laughs> Coach Marcelo, can we change it to Cinderfella? <laughs> so, you know, but like Justin said, I mean these guys they deserve to be here and, and they put on quite a performance, but man, the Gregory Portland Wildcats, man, do they deserve to be here as well. It's just been a great, great ball game so far in game one of this three game series, so yeah, it should be a lot of fun. At the end of the series, it's going to be tough for one of these teams. And uh, as people, fans of Coastal Bend Baseball, it's sad to see one of them has to go, but that's the game. That's how it goes. 2-2 two -two count here on Matridis. Pitch going to miss outside, ball three. I look back at it, Jake, and I wish I wish back then we would have had a chance to, you know, play some of these corpus schools. We only had the Ray Texans in our district, and uh, it would have been a lot of fun to meet up with Carol and King and moments like this. That 3-2 pitch can be hit up the middle. Shortstop King going to come over and make the play in time for out number two. Jackie King continues. Off the range. Yeah, continues a great defensive effort by both of these ball clubs. Man, King made that grab on the first base Jake side of second. The, the shortstop, Jackie Number King, three, and e. two down for EJ Cantu. And again, you know, you, you, you get that big catch to get, you know, the Tigers out of that inning, and you think that the momentum has shifted, and then, you know, here comes... Robbie Spencer and says no sir you know <laughs> <laughs> two up two down we're not going to let it shift too far over and that's kind of what both of these pitchers have done so far in this ball game that first pitch can be in there called strike one oh one pitch going to be fouled off to the left side so oh and two Sponsored by yeah, that's the best way to best way to kill some momentum is just come out and throw strikes. He's been doing a good job of that. Seems to be getting better as the game goes along. We talked about it too. First pitch strikes on two thirds of the hitters that he's faced. That pitch gonna miss outside. So one ball, two strikes. One two pitch can be popped up to the left side, gonna get out of play. <laughs> Everybody holds their breath on those foul balls. <laughs> Aiden Flores checking in, rooting for the Tigers. Robert Longoria as well. Virginia Sandoval, a Tiger fan. Phil checking in from Georgia, rooting for the Wildcats. One, two pitch, gonna miss up, ball two. Steven Smith checking in as well. Says what a game and what a game it has been without a doubt. The two, two pitch, curveball gonna miss away, ball three. Gotta think Carroll really, really wants Gantu to get on base. That way, even if the next batter does happen to get out, you'll get that top of the lineup up that next half inning. GP already went through their top half. Three, two pitch, gonna miss, ball four. Great at bat right there from Gantu, and if, if you want somebody up in this moment, this might be the guy. Two down, one off. Shortstop. Christian Martinez. Christian Martinez. Martinez so far 0 for 2 in the ball game. Flew out to center in the second. 
Struck out in the fourth, so he's 0 for 2, looking for his first base hit, and there have not been many <laughs> here in this ball game. First pitch to Martinez, curveball over his head. He's gonna miss for ball one. Good job pulling the bat down. Spencer gonna ask for a new baseball. Always really wondered it. Didn't pitch very much, but I think it's more of the person than the baseball, but I always wondered at what would happen if he didn't like the ball that he got. <laughs> the throw next it ball? back again, yeah, throw it back again. I think I've seen that before though. Well, they throw a couple of baseballs back. No, I don't like that one either. <laughs> one oh pitch, gonna miss up ball two. If I was an umpire, I'd put it back in my ball bag and just pull it right back out. Here you go. <laughs> 2-0 count here. Martinez going to look for a fastball here. 2-0 pitch, and he got the fastball. Going to pop it up in the right center. Right fielder going to make the play for out number three. So for Carroll, no runs on, no hits, no errors. One runner left on as we head into the top of the seventh inning. It'll be Glynick, Orell, and Gonzalez. 0 0 ball game, and listen to Blast Vision Live. With the sun staying out later and the weather getting warmer, get out and grill. Staple Street Meat Market has the best selection of quality meats for your next barbecue. Known for their Angus beef fajitas, smoked sausages, and new authentic family recipe, Ponle brand spices. Like us on Facebook and never miss our weekly specials. We're located at 7626 South Staple Street, number 111 in King's Crossing. But coming soon, our new location at 7418 South Staple Street is set to open in early 2022. Stable Street Me Market, proud supporters of South Texas Athletics. Rick Signs with Zbart of Corpus Christi is a proud supporter of South Texas Athletics. Stop by their location at 4535 Everhart for auto alarms, window tint, diamond gloss, auto detailing, rhino linings, and more. Call 361-985-9274 for more information or to make an appointment. Z-Bart, it's us or rust. Welcome back to the Stable Street Meat Market broadcast booth. <laughs> and a wave going on here. <laughs> and it's uh, Coach Rodriguez right in the middle of it. The athletic coordinator over at Carroll High School. He's Missed got it. the uh, Carroll fans in the in way. Here, Jake. here <laughs> comes, Jake. Here comes, hey! hey. Got it going all the way through. The Wildcat fans in on, on it as well. Come send on, it back. GP. Send it Come back. On. I gotta get involved in this. Come on. <laughs> Oh, come on. And here it comes again. Here it comes. Here it comes. Here it comes. Oh, it's a smaller wave this time. There we yeah, go. So there we go. There we go. Maybe they're a little nervous. <laughs> it's the best time of the year right here. Playoff baseball doesn't get any better. The atmosphere is amazing. The crowd showing up for both of these ball clubs tonight. A lot of fun, a lot of fun, and a great, great I ball say, game. Jake, I want to say, I don't know if we remember exactly, but at Waterburger Field at Moody and Kalal, and I believe that that same thing happened. It was pretty cool because it went all the way around. First pitch. Had fans out in the outfield on the berms, and that's what playoff baseball is about, especially in South Texas. First pitch misses for ball one. Gage Glynick, the batter. Glynick go for two in the ball game. Now it's going to be popped up, right side, shallow right field, dancing around is Bush. He finally <laughs> <laughs> makes the grab. Oh, man, that was funny. He's doing some dance moves he, there. He had some good <laughs> dance moves in that whole <laughs> in that his series right down. there. <laughs> but he does make the grab. Matridis was there just in case. But it was J.J. Bush who a funny guy. made the out. And... Uh, it's going to bring Kobe Orell to the plate. Kobe 0 for 2 in the ball game as well. And the pitch misses for ball 1. Kobe has not seen a lot of pitches. I think 
first pitch swinging both times. So he's going to see a couple this time. And he sees a couple of balls. So a 2 0 count. A little bit more patient here in this at bat. And that one's up and in for ball three. Jacqueline Garcia checking in on the chat, rooting for the Tigers. There's a strike, three and one. Rudy's saying he's glad CCISD decided to implement the turf at Cabinets, a lifesaver last week and this week. 3-1 pitch, and that one is going to be lined, and it's going to drop in front of Matridis. And that, green. folks, is the first base hit of the ball game for the Wildcats. And I scored it an error up there, but there's just absolutely no that way that's an error. Um, there we go. Now they made the change, and it's going to be a base hit. So a base hit for Kobe Orell. Daniel Gonzalez to the plate. Uh, we were asked on the chat earlier to give the line, and, and uh, now you know why we did not. <laughs> Give the line. I think that guy knows better than that, too. <laughs> As that first pitch. That guy has two sons that are pitchers. So. <laughs> you don't want to do that. We can give you guys the line now if you want. <laughs> so for the Wildcats, no you runs. Try to set us up for failure right there. No <laughs> runs on one hit, and they committed one error. Make sure we got the same thing they do. Yeah, we do. Bunted to the first baseman. And nice got a nice will take it there. himself. Close over there at first base, but it's going to be a tough play to turn that. Good job making sure of, of one out. So sack bunt, and it will push Orell into scoring position for Braden Talamantes. So for the Wildcats, no runs, one hit, one error, and for the Tigers, no runs, three hits, one error. First pitch to Talamantes misses up for ball one. So runner at second base with one out here in the top of the seventh. Scoreless ball game. Talamantes chops that one foul, third base side, one and one. He's 0 for 1 with a walk and a fly out to right. So 0 for 1, Talamantes. Dudney unofficially 98 pitches. Officially 98 pitches, so we're on the same page here with the pitch count. That's 12 pitches to play with. That one's going to miss low and outside. Two and one to count. We'll reach the century mark on this next pitch. Runner going to take off. Paul's going to hit the bat of the batter. Wow. Yeah, Palomo trying to make the throw right there and hits the bat of Talamantes. Never, uh, never seen that. I don't think I've ever seen that either. What a bounce, though. Stayed right there. It stayed right there. Could have been worse. Could have bounced off to the side. So a stolen bag for Kobe Orell. In the count, thought it two. was three and one, but did he say two and two? Three and one, three one count here. <laughs> Strike two. So full count on Talamantes. Two down. Everybody getting rowdy. Wildcat fans, Tiger fans, baseball fans, and the 3-2 pitch going to miss outside for ball four. Going to have a pinch hitter here. Looks like it's going to be number 10. Get you a name in a minute. It'll be Carter, A.J. Carter, come in to hit. So Carter will bat for Vias. See if I can get you some numbers on A.J. Carter. This is exactly why we... We as coaches, we tell our guys to be ready. You never know when your number's going to be called. And 
runners on the I know the coaches always tell their kids it could be in the seventh inning of a blah 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 and and, and look what's happening right here you're getting a getting a pinch hit Carter the senior coming in batting 238 on the season 15 hits and 63 at bats one double 10 runs driven in for AJ Carter So first and third for the Wildcats. Carter at the plate, two outs. Here in the top of the seventh inning, no score. Dudney comes set, here comes the pitch. Outside corner, called strike one. Dudney, that was pitch number 103. 110 the pitch count limit for high school baseball. So he's got seven pitches to work with here. One pitch, misses low and outside, one and one. Dalamante is at for first. Me to, hard for me to sit here, Jake. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I was about to say the same thing. Yeah. Kind of got me on the edge of my seat. One, one pitch, here it comes. And one's going to miss outside, two and one. Coach Jonesy calls mm. the signs over there from third base. It's the third a tough base situation box. To, to send a runner, but I <laughs> gotta say that they, Coach Jonesy likes to coach like that. Two one pitch, gonna be driven into right field and down for a base hit. In the score is Orell, and an RBI pinch hit single for AJ Carter, and the first run is on the board here in the top of the seventh inning. And it's the Gregory Portland Wildcats with a 1-0 lead here in game one. Well, we you said it, Justin. Yeah, we you know about it. It's, it's you have to be ready when your number's called, and, and that young man was ready. And I mean, it's, it's, I'd say it's, it's easier to sit in the dugout and, and, and be mad and complain, and, and, and it's harder to be ready, be focused, and locked in for a big moment like that. And you got to tip your hat to that young man. You know, the, the Wildcats and, and, and DJ Dudney, he had a no-hitter coming into the top of the seventh inning, and they get their first two hits off of him. But And it's not just about getting hits. It's about getting hits, you know, timely hits. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's, I mean, like you said, you got to tip your hat to what H.A. Carter just did right there. Not easy. With two outs, he gets an RBI single. And someone, I don't remember who it was, put on the chat board earlier, you know, tonight in a game like this might only take one run. But it will also, what that does is flips the order. And now you got Walker Yannick at the plate with runner, a runner in scoring position, first and second. Dalamante is over there at second base. Yannick 0 for 2 in the ball game. First pitch in there for a strike. Yannick flew out in the first, walked in the fourth, and flew out to right again in the sixth. And that pitch, backhand right there by Palomo. Keeping the runners put. One and one to count. outside so this will be his last batter of the game either way he's at official officially 109 and unofficially 109 <laughs> <laughs> got to read both and he can pass the 110 in the same at bat so he can he can finish the at bat one, here yeah. but Yannick will be his last batter he faces either way 2-1 pitch is going to miss for ball three so three and one to count Two down, first and second for the Wildcats. A one nothing lead. Be ready, Walker. Be ready. Watch your good now. A couple of folks asking how fast he's throwing. I, hey. We don't know. We don't 
<laughs> they don't have a gun out here at left all. My, left my radar gun at home. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no idea, There's guys. Sorry about that. There's some coaches down there, but we can't see that far down. So. Now it's going to be fouled off. Yeah, out of play. Put, that'll put the runners in motion here. Full count. Uh, Scott Moore asking who's throwing, and it's DJ Dudney for the Carroll Tigers and Robbie Spencer for the Wildcats. Two great performances so far, no matter how these games, this game turns out. These guys came and showed out tonight. Runners on the move, swing and a miss. Dudney strikes out Yannick, but the Wildcats scoring one run on two hits. There were no errors, and two men left on base. We head to the bottom of the seventh inning. One nothing Wildcats, Tigers coming to bat. You guys don't go anywhere. Blast Vision live from Cabinus Field. Lithia Chrysler Jeep Dodge and Ram of Corpus Christi is a proud supporter of South Texas Athletics. Come by and see us at 4313 South Staples in Autotown. We'd like to wish all of the local teams the best of luck this season from your friends at Lithia Chrysler Jeep Dodge and Ram. Three six one hsblastcom your newest source for Coastal Bend 5A baseball and football news. Matt Rogers, Jake Vasquez, George Vondercheck, Stu Duncan, and Pete Garcia, positively spotlighting student athletes, coaches, programs, and schools through insightful features, video, game stories, stats, fan polls, schedules, rosters, and so much more. You can find us on Facebook. Twitter and Instagram 361hsblast.com come check us out welcome back to the Sable Street Me Market broadcast booth bottom of the seventh inning we go Carroll Tigers down to the last three outs they'll send up eight nine and one in the order Palomo Chavez and Gonzalez Robbie Spencer back out on the mound for the Gregory Portland Wildcats, and we have Spencer unofficially. 90 pitches. 90 80. pitches, and they have him 89 on the board, so we're one pitch ahead. So officially 89 pitches for Robbie Spencer. And a one nothing Wildcat lead. The Wildcats getting their first hit of the ball game in the top of the seventh inning. But that one led to their second hit of the ball game, and that's the one that mattered, a pinch hit, RBI single by A.J. Carter, and the only run on the board was in the top of the seventh, giving the Wildcats a 1-0 lead here in game one. This series will shift over to Ingleside tomorrow night, another 7 p.m. first pitch. The expected pitching matchup would be Malachi Lott for the Wildcats, and Nick Matridis for the Carroll Tigers. That's what we expect. Doesn't mean that's what we'll see, but that's what, that's what we expect we'll see. Also starting tomorrow night is the Ray Texans and the, and the uh, Veterans Memorial Eagles. And uh, we'll have that ball game for you over on Blast Vision 2. You like, you like pitching, you're going to see two more guys tomorrow. Um, of course, we don't know for sure, but Jose Acuna and Nick, uh, not Jack Martin is, excuse me. That would be the expected matchup. Yeah. First pitch to Palomo misses low for ball one. And then that don't get any better. I mean, you wait for game two, you might get Xavier Perez and Kevin Goss. There you go. That pitch is going to be driven out to center field. Lot to his right, left, and he'll squeeze it pretty much straight away caught center field right there. Caught, one that away. Low, caught that very low towards the ground. So one down for Chris Chavez. Number two, Chris Chavez. Chavez one for one in the ball game. Singled in the third, walked in the fifth, and takes pitch in the turf. One ball, no strikes. We know for sure we will see Jack Martinez uh, 
Coach Ruiz not shy about telling you who he's going to throw. He's done that uh, from the beginning of the playoffs. Uh, and he, he said yesterday in the press conference, yeah, I'm going to go with, if it ain't broke, don't, you know, don't fix yeah. it. And he's going to go Jack Martin is in game one and Keevan Goss in game two. One old pitch is going to be fouled off out of play on the third base side, yeah, ball and a strike. He hasn't been shy the whole the whole playoff, just letting you know. And at this point, these guys have all played each other. They, they, there's, there ain't no secrets no more. It's, it's, it's just go out and yeah, play. It's, it's, That pitch going to be in there, called strike two. <laughs> I've noticed he's done it a few times. He goes back and looks looks at the baseball, has his own little routine. He does in between pitches. Pitch going to be swung on and miss for strike three. And Carroll Tigers are down to their last out. If you're going to be down to your last out, these are the guys you want. And certainly this young man right here. I've seen him run into some, run into some baseballs and hit them a long way. and I think that might be the only thing he has on his mind right now. Of course, till he gets the two strikes. Coach Jones, you're going to let a left fielder know, play at the fence. If it's over your head, it's gone. Got two left fielders out there. First pitch missing for ball one. Malachi Lott playing left center. Yes, he is. Raiden Talamante is playing. <laughs> Definitely playing Gonzalez to pull. <laughs> he can run, too, if he, if he can put one in that gap. Things might get interesting here. 1 0 pitch, curveball. Man, that was a one, Jake. That was one of the few hangers he's thrown. So 1 1 count here to Gilbert Gonzalez. And one pitch can be fouled back. So we're Carroll Tigers down to their last strike. That's going to get the Wildcat faithful on their feet. One two count here on Gonzalez. So he gets the pitch he likes. The one two pitch. And he swung on and missed for strike three. And that is your final, a one nothing Wildcat win here in game one. We couldn't have asked for a better way to start this series between these two ball clubs. Uh, what a ball game this was. And you guys don't go anywhere. Um, we're going to have a post game. Uh, we're going to talk with Coach Jonesy, and uh, we'll select a player of the game as well. Sorry about the folks. Uh, <laughs> kind of walking in front of the camera right there. <laughs> but uh, you guys don't go anywhere. I'm going to get you some final totals on this ball game. And, uh, and then we will, like I said, we'll, we'll pick a player of the game. And uh, I believe we've got someone out on the field so we can talk to these, these folks here in just a sec. Um, Justin, man, what an effort between these two pitchers, though. Yeah, definitely a great ball game from both sides. And, uh, I mean, we're hoping we see a ser uh, series this tight the whole time. I know who I I know my pick for player of the game. Uh, I'll I'll wait to I'll wait to announce that. We'll see what Jake <laughs> has, and we, we usually come to a decision. We're we, usually on the same page. We're usually so. on the same page. Yeah, usually on the same page. And uh, so the final totals here for the Wildcats: one run on two hits, they committed one error, and for the Tigers, no runs on three hits, they committed one error. The winning pitcher Robbie Spencer he went the distance, no runs on three hits three walks and nine strikeouts and DJ Dudney the hard luck loser he went the distance for the Tigers as well only one run allowed it was earned on two hits five walks and four strikeouts for Dudney so this game like I said will shift to Ingles side uh, we're gonna take a quick break but you guys don't go anywhere we're gonna be right back um, right now uh, coach Jonesy talking with the Wildcats over behind first base so we're going to give them a chance to finish up that conversation and then we'll come back and we'll get you guys a uh, post game with uh, coach Jonesy and our player of the game so you guys don't go anywhere we'll be right back Blast Vision live from Cabinus Field
Welcome back to Sable Street Meat Market Broadcast Booth, our Z-Bart post-game show. And I have head coach Ronnie Jonesy on the line with me, coach. Um, first of all, of course, congratulations on the win. Uh, a big one. It's always important, you know, to win game one. But how huge was this? Yes, sir. Anytime you can win a playoff game, man, it's big. And to come out here, you know, three game series, we're at Carroll's home field to be able to sneak that first one out. Uh, you know, their, their guy threw a hell of a game. Robbie did just a little bit better tonight. Uh, but being able to come over here to Cabinets and still game one from them, knowing that we get to go back to Ingleside, which is our home place uh, this weekend, you know, that's real big. Coach, and, and, and let's talk about that pitching, this pitching duo, man. It seemed like it seemed like when they got tougher with runners on, both of them. DJ did a heck of a job when you guys got runners on, but so did Robbie, man. When they got, I mean, and it seemed like, let's talk about that pitching first before I talk about momentum, but, but just tell me what you saw from your starter tonight, Robbie. Uh, yeah, with Robbie, you know, he, I felt like he, maybe he didn't have his best stuff early. Uh, first three innings, I, I felt like, he didn't have command of, of all his pitches. Uh, but once runners got on, man, he buckled down. He got some big Ks, and he got us out of some jams. Um, and then I felt like later in the game, man, he just picked up momentum, and he found his groove, and he started attacking batters. And, um, you know, I, I thought he did an exceptional job for us tonight. And 94 co- pitches in seven innings, man. That's a heck of a job. That's a heck of a ball game. As as he had. Yes, sir. Yeah, he, he did a great job. And and let's talk about momentum, Coach. In, in a game like this, man, it just seemed like every time the momentum swung one way, you'd get the pitcher out there and just kind of shut shut the other team down, and it went back and forth and back and forth um, up until the top of the seventh inning. And, and for you, is that just, man, you – these guys are just in it they just know it now or is there anything you had to say to them just to kind of keep them focused yeah well I mean there's a couple times in the game where we thought maybe we deserved a hit or maybe we deserved a uh, you know an opportunity to score uh, but they made a great play or maybe the wind held the ball up just a little bit so there's some times where I noticed in the uh in the dugout our body language kind of changed a little bit um but I, I had to tell them hey guys you got to keep fighting man this is playoff baseball it's not going to get any easier from here on out the competition's tough. If you don't like tight games, then you don't belong in the playoffs because this is how it's going to be from here on out. Coach, I don't, I don't want to keep you too long, but I do have one more question for you. And our player sure. of the game is AJ Carter. I mean, that was huge, Coach. Uh, 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 you know, Justin was talking about up here. You know, he coaches summer ball, and he said, "Man, you, you tell your players as a coach always be ready. You never know when your number's going to get called." And he comes up in a big spot, and he ends up getting. You know, the winning hit right there, RBI single in a pinch hit effort by A.J. Carter. How huge was that for you, Coach? Yeah, it says a lot about A.J. uh, sitting over there for six and a half innings or whatever it was, and then to come up there and uh, have an opportunity to, to, you know, be influential in the game, and he goes in there and and he gets a a single with an RBI. You know, so hats off to A.J., man. I'm super proud of him. That's kind of been – that's kind of been what we've been doing uh, in the playoffs as far as our outfield rotation. So we stuck with it tonight. Um, he'll be back in the lineup tomorrow. Hopefully he can deliver another big hit. But, man, hats off to A.J. Uh, I don't know how many high school kids can sit over there on the bench and uh, maybe feel sorry for themselves because they're not playing and then finally get that opportunity. Man, he made the most of it. So congratulations, A.J., man, and I'm, and I'm excited for him. Congratulations to you guys, Coach. We will be there with you guys tomorrow when Game 2 kicks off. Thank you so much for talking with us, and we would love to talk to AJ if we could. Yes, sir. I appreciate you covering us, Jake. Man, you have a good night. You too, Coach. You want to talk to the kid? About No? What, what question should I ask him? All right, young man. Let Let's talk first uh, uh, about this ball game, and 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 I want you to tell me. I mean, the effort that Robbie Spencer gave you guys tonight, the defense um, that they played behind him. How, how I mean, you watching this ball game with us. I mean, what is that like, man, to be able to see the job that those guys did? Man, our defense been doing this all year. Uh, Robbie Spencer is a hell of a team. It's all strikes so far. Good stretch in the sequence. That's a big thing. And we make plays behind him. When we do that, we're in the game. 
Yeah, I got a question for you. So, so your name wasn't in the lineup. What what was your process? Like, what was the mindset the whole game? Were you were you envisioning that moment? Yeah, yes, sir. I mean, I thought at coming in this game, I could get a chance in the seventh, which what we did last week. And uh, you know, it, it was zero zero. And the more the game went on, I, the more I thought how big of a bat this is gonna be. And I came up, and the atmosphere was just like. I knew I had to put the ball in play. I couldn't strike out. I, I just I said make them make a play or something to get me out. Do anything to make them get me out. And he just threw me a slider. I was able to slap it the other way. Biggest hit of my life. <laughs> <laughs> hey, congratulations to you, young man. We will Thank see you, you guys tomorrow. A huge yes, hit. Sir. Our player of the game, AJ Carter. Thank you so much for talking with us. I know that those guys are waiting for you. You probably got some yeah, folks yes, out sir. there <laughs> waiting to give you a big old hug, young yes, man. Sir. So we will see you guys you, tomorrow. Sir. Congratulations. Thank you. See you tomorrow. Thank you, sir. Our player of the game, yeah, AJ that's, Carter. That's a lesson right there for any young players or even 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 parents in the stands, like your 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 kid or yourself. You don't get you don't get that start, but you have to be mentally ready. Because when you if you come in that situation and you don't get the job done, uh, I mean nobody's gonna feel sorry for you. You're gonna, you're you're either gonna be the hero or the goat is what they say. So I know the goat means a different term nowadays, but yeah, you gotta envision that moment. You gotta envision that whole game. You have to be paying attention because when your name's called, you you gotta come through. And and he and that young man did, and he knows his role. So that was a big big win for the Wildcats. Absolutely, I, I I agree with you right there, and and you should know better than than most. I mean, as a coach yourself, and and um, yeah, you're right. A huge moment for that young man, and and uh, and you know, huge props from his coach as it should be, and and getting the heroes welcome over there <laughs> as well. So and, and, and one thing though, another thing, Jake is is you know that this team, this team, they've their backs been against the wall all year. They're they're not gonna Carol's not gonna come up or not feel sorry for themselves. They're gonna be ready to go game two and. Uh, they're gonna come out tomorrow fighting. They they've done it all year. We've talked about it, and uh, they've been they've been here before. They they've lost game one and had to come back, and it's nothing new. It, it takes it takes a full team, and uh, they're gonna give GP their best punch tomorrow. And they've got Mr. Ice in his veins, Nick <laughs> Matridis, who yeah, will McLovin. very likely <laughs> go for them tomorrow. And that matchup, we're expecting Nick Matridis for Carroll and uh, Malachi Lott for the Wildcats. And again, just one more reminder, that ball game, 7 o'clock first pitch, and it will be played in Ingleside. Hey, don't forget, Rudy Trevino will be in town. And as a matter of fact, Justin's going to join him right back here at Cabinets Field tomorrow for the first ball game of best of three between Ray and Veterans Memorial. So the 29-5A showdown uh, on the other side is Ray and Veterans Memorial, and they'll start tomorrow. Also a 7 p.m. first pitch. I believe these guys are going to go on at about 6.30 with the pregame and, and kind of talk to you about how those two teams got there and what they've done you know, throughout the season against each other as well. So sh don't miss that one. It'll be over on Blast Vision 2. As always, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll tweet it out. We'll put it up on Facebook, giving you guys the link for that. Uh, don't forget, before you sign out, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of the action. Um, you guys rock the chat once again like you always do, and it looks like you're still going out there um, with the chat. But um, we appreciate you guys so much for keeping us on our toes. Thank you, everybody who, who was watching. We had um, over 2,300 views tonight, and, and that's all on you. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much for watching. That's going to wrap things up for us here tonight. Our final one nothing Gregory Portland Wildcats in Game 1 of this Best of 3 series, Blast Vision Live. From Cabinets Field, we'll see you tomorrow night.